Over 20 years ago, Alex Jones created the media platform called InfoWars, and in the decades since, it's grown into a truly remarkable institution with over 200 radio affiliates, tens of millions of unique website visitors monthly, and a 24-7 live news TV channel broadcasting from state-of-the-art studios in Austin, Texas. InfoWars has become the most trusted independent news source in the country dedicated to delivering breaking news, live coverage of special events, and exclusive reports you won't find anywhere else. While the old guard media struggles to maintain supremacy in a landscape brought by innovation and technology, InfoWars has been at the forefront of the information revolution. From 8 million radio listeners, over 2 million YouTube subscribers, or the billions of views of our online content, InfoWars proves dominant in every facet of media we enter. For the hardest hitting reports, uncompromising analysis, for high profile interviews and bombshell revelations, accept no substitutes. Demand truth. Demand InfoWars. InfoWars. Tomorrow's news today. Okay, the big story right now here in the United States that's got everybody on the edge of their seat is the fact that the New York Post on Sunday reported that Hillary, according to their sources in New York, is eyeing running for president in 2020. And my response to that is, of course she is. Regardless, she's going to want to raise the campaign money and then swindle it like she always does. I mean, she violates every law under the sun. But it's Joel Gilbert who first reported it on Friday at American Thinker. So we're posting the article on Infowars.com right now. It's a lengthy, detailed, 10-page report that you really need to read. We're going to be covering it with Joel Gilbert coming up at the bottom of this hour. Now, that said, I made some phone calls yesterday. And then I made some more phone calls this morning to some really smart folks in D.C. who are, let's just say, very close to Hillary's law firm. And I did some checking around, and I was told exactly what Joel Gilbert wrote from them. Because, you know, they think they have moles, we have moles as well. But I was told it's so she can try to maintain control over the party and that her and Obama are working together, but that they are still fighting with each other over the reins of control. So they're unified in their attempt to block Trump's agenda, to take Trump out, to stop the Make America a Great Again agenda. But that at the very top, then they're still struggling over the reins of power in the party. And so if she doesn't try to stay in the reins and tell her people, and she's still got a big cult behind her, that uh, that she's not running, then their power will completely dissipate. Already, uh, contributions to their foundation are down by 80-plus percent. Well, she's not in government anymore for paper play. But now they're doing the stunts like Bernie Stan Sanders flying around commercial. Now, Sanders would go one stunt further, and Sanders would fly and coach. Of course, the word is he doesn't really do that unless it's election time. But there's the Clintons that own a bunch of jet aircraft and have stolen billions of dollars and are just unbelievably corrupt, get paid millions of dollars per speech. There they are. Hillary keeps distance from deplorables as she flies commercial. There you go. So that is all coming up today. We're going to be looking at it, but is she really running? Yes. She is currently, we're only a year and a half out from the middle of the election. And we're only less than two and a half years out from the actual election. So the 2020 election is already going on. That's why Trump announced months ago it was genius because the Democrats are already campaigning against him. So the best way for him to get out in front of them is to get out in front of them. That's why you do that. But she is just arrogant and just crazy enough to actually go through with it all if she can try to stay alive. But as we all know, she's had more surgeries and more uh, health problems than Darth Vader. And so they call them gomers, people that have had a lot of cancer, a lot of heart problems, a lot of other things. 
but that are really hard to kill. So they have a lot of health problems, but they're still alive. And Hillary Clinton is a gomer. She's got to walk around with back braces. Uh, she's got to wear the glasses for the seizures. She gets been caught on tape having the seizures. She's constantly falling down. She's got vertigo. I mean, it's a hellish life, but she's trying to cling to power like herpes trying to stay alive on a toilet seat, hoping somebody sits down on it so it can be transferred onto them. So this is big exclusive intel you're going to get. Coming up, we're going to lay it all out. Hillary's in for 2020. It's Monday, the ninth day of July, 2018. I'm your host, Alex Jones. We're going to be here for the next four hours. Joe Gilbert, who broke the big story at AmericanThinker.com on Friday that the New York Post then picked up that is now one of the top stories in the world, uh, that Hillary Clinton is eyeing a run for the 2020 presidential nomination. And she's going to attempt to unseat 45. Unbelievable. I made some phone calls to a lot of sources yesterday and today about this. And they said, absolutely. And they broke down why, and I concurred with their analysis. But then I made some phone calls to some sources and basically bluffed them with a police tactic where you just say, well, I know that she's told you and they've said this, so keep your infrastructure in place, even though everybody's pay has been cut way back. I know the foundation has been making as much money, but I engaged a few individuals talking about, you know, how did she think she could win? This is crazy. And they just bluffed right into it. <laughs> Unbelievable. So Democrats that I've called that are close to Hillary that through my channels I've been able to talk to off and on over the years, they have been told since she lost about a week after that they were going to regroup and they were at least going to get the campaign money and they were going to control the Democratic Party process by her announcing her run early, then trying to control the party and then trying to pick someone that they would then hand the ball off to if her health goes down too much, which they think is a real possibility, obviously. But that that's how they will maintain control of the party. And what Joel Gilbert lays out in the American Thinker article that we've reposted to Infowars.com and Newswars.com, what he lays out dovetails with what all my sources are saying, because Hillary Clinton's evil may only be out stretched and outpaced by her arrogance she wears a back brace she has seizures she had a brain tumor removed in 2013 uh, she looks visibly extremely frail but she still reportedly works up to 16 hours a day trying to control her criminal network she is truly a monstrous witch but she's got her network in place. They are in a cult. They believe she's a god. They believe with the demographics they can turn women against Trump and have them vote for her simply because she's a woman. But most importantly, they're not going to turn loose of the Democratic Party infrastructure and money especially after their foundation is 75 to 80 plus percent down. So she doesn't just act evil. She doesn't just look evil. She behaves in a very, very wicked, destructive manner. Whatever she touches turns to absolute crud. And the fact that she thinks that she can win again or that she can even live that long is a sterling example of how arrogance and false confidence seems to go hand in hand with manifest evil. By the way, you look at Bill Clinton. I mean, the expiration date is up on that guy. It's like you leave a carton of milk in the refrigerator at the back, you forget about it. It's a see-through plastic container. You see it all clotted up at the top. You go, oh, that must be old milk. I forgot about it. You don't even need to look at the expiration date. 
But you still do, and you go, oh, this has been bad for two weeks. You go over and throw it in the trash can, or you dump it down the sink. And you look at Bill Clinton, and you look at Hillary, I mean, they are milk cartons that have, like, green floating at the top. And, and, and they've been in the refrigerator so long that the whole plastic carton has gas pressure in it from the rotting milk, and it's all bloated and about to pop. But it's perfect. They look like Emperor Palpatine from Star Wars. They act like Emperor Palpatine from Star Wars. And they're saying, no, we're going to hold on to power forever. Well, oh, but they're flying coach now. Isn't it just darling? Isn't it just special? Isn't it just cute? Now, we're going to look more at this with Joel Gilbert when he joins us in about 15 minutes. First, though, when we come back, I have talked to not just Roger Stone that has a lot of high-level sources, but I've talked to folks in the campaign, and I've talked to one of our sources in the White House, three sources today. And they have narrowed it down to the two people that they last were told, and one of them was told yesterday that Trump is leaning towards, but up to the minute, Trump is looking at all the data, all the information. He's calling Congress. He's getting their take on who can get confirmed and who is the most original constructionist constitutionalist. And so we'll look at the individuals uh, that are in the lead. But Kavanaugh was in the front of the lead until Trump learned, because he does have a de decent voting record uh, as a judge, but the connections to the Bushes and the connections to Karl Rove, uh, I, I've been told that he is not going to be picked. The president's currently decided he's out of the running. But I have the three names of who's in the running. You'll say, well, Alex, you're right most of the time, but you said that it was going to be Napolitano. Trump told Napolitano, you'll be my second choice. But then reportedly some conversations happened, and now it's attorney general that he's being eyed for because of the fact that he's not too old. It's just that we want to get somebody in there who can serve 30 years. And with Napolitano, maybe 10, 15, you know, he, he's an older guy. He's still really sharp. And so it's uh, more of a job for the attorney general spot. So we're going to be looking at that and going over some of those names when we come back from this break. We've got to end this special today or tomorrow because we're running low on a lot of the things that we're discounting 50%. Uh, and plus, the 4th of July week is over, but the second American Revolution sale is what I'm calling it, and it's extended until tomorrow when we have new specials that will be launched on Wednesday. I want to thank you all for your support. When you go buy books, videos, T-shirts, water filtration, air filtration, whatever the best systems are, we get them and we discount them and we sell them. And our supplements are the same as well. We have free shipping on U.S. domestic. Can't do it international. And 50% off. And when you say 50% off, we don't raise the price and then say it's 50% off. It's 50% off. Many of these, like the colloidal silver, silver bullet, uh, and knockout, and products like Super Mill Vitality and products like Brain Force are very close to losing money when I sell them at these prices. But I want new people who haven't tried it to try it and see how great it is. But I also know... When people come in to get these lost leaders, they buy other products. But just check out the T-shirts while you're in there because it sent shockwaves across the country to the globalists when Hillary for Prison shirts went out, 100-plus thousand of them. Now, granted, most of them we sold for $5. We sold maybe 10000 at full price. We sold the rest between 5 and $10, depending on what sales we had. I can't afford to do that because a lot of our shirts are made in America and printed. So they're costing us $10. We have a whole section that isn't made in America, but still printed here. And a lot of you choose to get that. I understand why, because I can sell you that for $9.95 and make 5 bucks, but I got to sell the made in America for $9.95 to make 10 bucks. So fund the Infowar, spread the First Amendment, take photos wearing the shirts. I love the new Reelect 45, because Walmart had the one saying impeach 45, but we just changed it, same basic design, to uh, Reelect. 45, the American flag at Infowars.com. And on the back, it says, I am the resistance. That means you, they're wearing it. And then we have 
Mean like a Wolverine shirt with Trump on it. It's red. It's awesome. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife.com. But whatever you do, support the broadcast. Without you, Soros will win. With your help, we are unstoppable. God bless you. All right. Uh, the president at this point, according to high-level multiple sources, has not decided yet at 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central. We'll be covering it live here tonight with special extended InfoWars Nightly News coverage of that because it is so critical and will deal such a major death blow if Trump can get a real conservative or constitutionalist or even libertarian confirmed on the, the court. It will be a big blow. It will demoralize the enemy. Uh, but they're also obviously going to try to go in and block the nomination. Uh, Al Gore, Rob Reiner, um, Hillary Clinton... Michael Moore, they've all called for uprisings, insurrection to block it. When we point out that they're calling for civil war and that USA Today says we're in a civil war, and I say we'll mark this July 4th then on America standing up to these people and, 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 and politically knowing we're in an information war, and they see it as a physical war, and I think you can mark July 4th, 2018 as the kickoff of the new civil war. Doesn't mean it means north versus south or the cavalry lining up to kill each other, but political scientists agree it is a civil war going from a cold civil war to a soft civil war to a hot civil war. And they play semantical games in thousands of newspapers since last week, saying Jones says that there will be total death on July 4th and shooting and killing everywhere. No, just conservatives and libertarians and Christians and others being attacked and being drugged by vehicles and being shot and being stabbed and being thrown out of businesses and being denied service and having their ribs broken and on and on and on, the things you've been doing. Now, let's play a clip here of the president earlier this morning saying that he does want to uh, let everybody know that he will be announcing who the new Supreme Court justice will be tonight. He'll make his decision, obviously, in the next few hours, and then get them ready to be there. But that he hasn't made up his mind yet, here it is. I'm getting very close to making a final decision. Not yet. And I believe uh, this person will do a great job. But I'm, I'm very close to making a decision. Have not made it official yet, obviously have not made it final, but let's say it's the four people, but, and they're excellent, everyone, you can't go wrong. Because it will cement a conservative majority of a democratic Now, let's go over who I have been told currently is at the head of the line. Judge Amy Barrett, Trump really likes her, but they're concerned she might not get confirmed because she's too, quote, Christian and too conservative and too constructionist. I think she would make a really good choice. That's, that's who I would like to see. Good-looking, smart, conservative, classical Catholic woman, a good person uh, to replace Kennedy. And it would really knock down all this stupid Hillary stuff about we don't want women in positions of power. The optics are great, too. Plus, she's really young. She could be on the court 35, 40 years. That's a big bonus. But she is third in the running right now. Uh, you're seeing in the news that Thomas Hardiman uh, is in the lead, according to Breitbart, uh, that 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 that. She, that Barrett and Hardyman are in the lead. That is not what I'm told from my high-level campaign sources, high-level White House sources, and Roger Stone has sources as well. That is not who I'm told is in the lead. She's in the number three position. Uh, Hardyman is in the num number four position. Uh, Senator Lee is in the running still. Kavanaugh is out. That's the big takeaway. Currently, Kavanaugh, because of his Bush connections, and because of his neon, uh, neocon connections, because of his never-Trumper connections, Brett Kavanaugh, uh, the minion reportedly of Karl Rove, not a, uh, not a big uh, plus as well, he was in the running and, and was put forward to the president up front, but that is not the case. Raymond Cathledge is right up at the top. Raymond Cathledge 
is right up there at the top. So, Catholic, Amy Barrett, and then one other as well that I'll go back to here in just a moment. But first, let's play one reason I'd really like to see Amy Barrett in there. Remember when Dianne Feinstein started channeling the Jedi Council Master Yoda and said, the dogma is strong in you. The force is strong with you. Join me and I will complete your training. The Emperor has foreseen this. No, I am your father. Don't act so surprised, Hillary. You aren't on any mercy mission this time. I want to know what happened to the plans they sent you. <laughs> so here she is channeling Master Yoda, saying the Christian dogma. Christian dogma strong in this one is, hmm. Here she is. When you read your speeches, um, the conclusion one draws is that the dogma lives loudly within you. And that's of concern when you come to big issues that large numbers of people have fought for for years in this country. By the way, I've got all my notes here. It's, it's, it's not Catholic, it's, it's Keithledge. But you can say it Catholic, Keithledge. Um, again, I'm going to go over more of this as things continue to unfold, but some sources are saying Hardyman is in the lead and that Kavanaugh is down because of his anti-Trump connections, and that's, that's pretty much unanimous. But a lot of folks, like I said, are rooting for Barrett because of what you just saw. But we're all going to find out this evening. Make... No mistake about that, so I'm extremely excited about it. But let's hear that bizarre Diane Feinstein clip one more time. Imagine if you said to someone like Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who's Jewish, your Jewish faith is strong in you. The dogma of Jews is strong in you. You would see that senator removed from office because of the bigoted uh, statement. We'll come back with more of that on the other side. And we will, we will also break down the fact that Hillary is intending to run for 2020. And the man that first broke it last Friday is going to be joining us with the inside intel and more. Newswars.com. Infowars.com. Europewars.com. Next year's news today. We are back live. We are broadcasting worldwide on this Monday, the ninth day of July 2018. And as is so often the case, real investigative journalists first report on what's happening and then mainstream media picks it up later. And uh, no stranger to breaking big news stories, investigative journalist, documentary filmmaker Joel Gilbert wrote a detailed article that I'm actually jealous of. I wish you'd have sent it to Infowars.com for AmericanThinker.com. Uh, and I started making phone calls yesterday saying, is this really the case to some high-level sources, both Democrat and Republican? And they said, absolutely. And then they laid out why. And Gilbert lays a lot of it out in his article. But the, the, the big issue here is that Hillary Clinton wants to do this to keep control of the Democratic Party and to be able to swindle the money out of it just like she's done for the last few decades because her major foundation is falling apart and has seen donations to it down almost 80% because there's no more pay per play. So the only way she can stay in the game is to at least start the run, some are saying even early, like Trump's done, start the run next year, and then use that to keep her nose in the party and then parlay it into controlling who the nominee is down the road because she does have so many documented health problems. 
that have been confirmed. I mean, my God, she falls down everywhere she goes. She looks like hell. Uh, Bill Clinton looks like his expiration date was out 20 years ago. It looks like molding bread. It's clear that they're not long for this world, you know, five, ten years max. And, 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 and who would try then to cling to power like that, like Hitler in his bunker? Well, when you've got so many crimes coming out, you need to look strong to your party. You need to look like you're going to win. It's a bluff. That's why they tried to unseat the delegates for Trump. They stole the nomination from Sanders. They tried to then you know, push impeachment of the president. That They have deep staters staying in, and, and you see Brennan, and you see Clapper, and you see them all in the news uh, saying, stay in government and, and resist the president. Don't follow his orders. And if you're young and Trump tries to hire you, don't do it, or you'll be blackballed once we get rid of him. That's all over the news. Overthrow the president. Uh, kidnap his son and rape him. Harass everybody. Surround the Capitol. Don't let him get his Supreme Court nominee uh, confirmed that he's about to announce tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern. And so, yes, Hillary is planning to run. She's already told her people this. And I know some sources locally in the Democratic Party that are high up and also nationally, and I called them and I said, so she's running. Man, I tell you, people are crazy. America rejected her, and they're very arrogant back until they catch themselves. They're like, well, how do you know? And I'm like, well, it's in the news, and I just bluffed you. Then they get a little bit owly. But I have talked to three Democrats who've already been told, and I'm talking to people that run major operations, okay? So I have sources on and off record, obviously. So Joel Gilbert's done a great job laying this all out, and he's the guy that first broke it, on Friday, here's why Hillary Clinton is running again in 2020. We've reposted it at Infowars.com and Newswars.com. is from American Thinker. It's also at JoelGilbert.net. Uh, and Joel joins us always with big breaking news. I appreciate you coming on uh, on short notice. Uh, you lay it all out here, but but uh, you, you get into some other facets. But just recapping it right up front, I've talked to my Republican sources, Democrat sources, all of them. They say, of course, that's a... That's a no-brainer. And, of course, the president, let's play a clip of the president if we can, has, has said repeatedly that he'd love to run against Hillary. Uh, so uh, here's President Trump on that. I hope Hillary runs. Is she going to run? I hope. Hillary, please run again. Go ahead. So, and, and he, he also says he wants Maxine Waters to continue to be the face of the Democratic Party. So, so Joel, from your sources and, and just from your research, take us to the end first and then walk us through uh, from the beginning, but but going to the end of the book right now, uh, are my sources accurate from your sources that she indeed is already told the party and it's a done deal? Yeah, I, I think you can see that it's a done deal. That's what all my sources were telling me. And if you just look at her actions and look at the equation, uh, picking up from where you left off is uh, the reason the Clintons have stayed out of jail for 30 years, despite a rap sheet that would make Al Capone blush, is because they make the jailers live in fear. You saw Lisa Page wrote Peter Strzok, be easy on Hillary because she might be president. So as long as people think that the Clintons have power, might be in power, they're not gonna be prosecuted. That's part of the equation. Uh, another big part of the equation is simply Hillary's life mantra. You've heard her say it a million times. When I was six years old, my mother uh, told me that even though I got knocked down and the other little girls hit me and I fell down, life is not about getting knocked down, it's how you get back up. So the Clintons never quit. They never quit. Whitewater, Benghazi, uh, email server scandal, Monica Lewinsky, they just never quit. They don't care. Uh, so when you look at the landscape, as I've laid it out, uh, in 2020, on the Democrat side, you're going to have probably the very best potential candidates are going to stay away because they're going to think Trump is too tough to beat and they don't want to ruin their prospects for 2024. So what you've got is a group of publicity hounds running with Hillary Clinton, and she's going to be able to get an easy 25 percent of the vote based on name recognition and her loyal followers with the other 10 candidates splitting the vote. Now, Trump did something very similar. He had a loyal core of supporters, and every time someone dropped out, he'd pick up about half of those, and the rest would split. So this is called a path to the nomination. Hillary is the only person that has a realistic path, and it is realistic, and I think it's gonna be irresistible for her not to take that path. 
Uh, and then the question becomes, well, can she win? Of course she can't win. Trump is, is going to beat her. But you have to understand how skilled the Democrats are at voter fraud, voter ID fraud, early vote fraud, vote by mail fraud, uh, driver's license, motor voter fraud. That's right. Trump, Trump, Trump all yeah. evidence shows won by a gigantic popular vote landslide, but they clearly stole at least six states, got caught in the computers by Homeland Security, state security, in five others. I mean, this all came out. Uh, Democrats, uh, like Bev Harris, she's a liberal, but she said, no, Trump had a bunch of states stolen from him. So they're going to go all in. They're going to go all in. Don't forget, remember, Hillary did not concede, even though she lost, because in 2016, they were waiting for maybe some votes to be found in Michigan, some votes. And that's to the come first time with. I looked it up in 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 in, in yeah. U.S. history ever that someone didn't come out and give a concession speech. Right. So all they really need to do is flip five counties in three swing states. Hillary can get 300 percent of the vote in five counties in three swing states. When the Republicans start complaining. Attorney General Keith Ellison will call them racist and put them on the watch list for hate speech. Uh, that's how close it was last time. They can flip a few counties through all these tricks, and it's not inconceivable. Don't forget, Hillary has a billion dollars stored away for a rainy day. I mean, you didn't really think that all that Russian money that went to the Clinton Foundation actually went to hungry children in Haiti, do you? Absolutely. Let me, when we come back, give you, I'm going to go ahead and give some inside baseball out here, but. You know why they're putting all this Sandy Hook stuff out against me in the news that's twisted and not accurate and why they're also doing all the other Pizzagate things that aren't accurate against me. Democrats at the highest level have been told they're going to partially run on that in 2020, uh, equating Trump with me, even though Hillary already did it in 2016 and it didn't work. So that's another reason we know they're running thousands of articles demonizing me just to get name recognition up as a negative with Democrats to use me against Trump, which is another reason I was told by Washington insiders, yeah, dude, they're not running all these ads for nothing. Because these aren't news articles. These are paid ads. Newsweek and all these other groups that's coming out as a scandal have been paid to run all this disinformation against yours truly. So that's another sign Hillary is in there. They're not doing all these attack pieces on me just for fun. They are building me up as a demon to hurt Trump. Well, it looks like Trump may get his witch. Hillary Clinton is running for president 2020. You're hearing and hearing exclusively with Joel Gilbert. But here's the president talking about it recently. I, oh, I hope Hillary runs. Is she going to run? I hope. Hillary, please run again. Go ahead. He was going to take Nancy Pelosi's place, and I was so disappointed because I want to keep Nancy Pelosi right where she is with Maxine Waters. I want to keep Nancy Pelosi. Please, I want to make a plea to my Democrat friends. Please, please, please don't remove Nancy Pelosi. She should be where she is. And please keep Maxine Waters on the air as your face and your mouthpiece for the Democrat Party. Please. Now, I will tell you, I have talked to folks in the Trump system, very high level, and I've just told them, hey, clearly they're running thousands of articles a month saying things about me and Sandy Hook and things I didn't say to demonize me and tie to Trump, try to hurt the president. And I know Hillary's behind it. I know they're financing, and I know that Soros is paying the news to run these articles. This is paid uh, false content. It's bigger than just shutting me down. And they've told me, oh, no, we're fully aware of that. Uh, just like Hillary spent $18 million on one ad of clips of myself edited out of context to then say this is Trump's buddy. But the crazy thing is they're going to be running against an economy that's doing better, thousands of new factories, uh, all this good things Trump's doing. And then they think it's going to be Alex Jones. I, 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 I'm not kidding. That is what, I mean, they already ran against Trump with Alex Jones as one of their main centerpieces. This is, this is bizarre. This is Twilight Zone. So I didn't mean to write myself as a gonzo journalist into the story here, uh, but that's indeed what's happened, Joel. So uh, give me your take on that, and then let's get back into uh, your seminal uh, piece. Here's why Hillary Clinton is running again in 2020 and, and and she is running she's got her people they've told them 
uh, I've made the calls, I've done the legwork, it's true, and then you lay out why this is happening. And then let me just remind folks, here's the Washington Post, how a film about Obama's communist real father won at the Federal Elections Commission. And they've tried multiple times, the FBI's been questioning people about you and I, in association with Roger Stone, criminal investigations, and new ones have been opened. This one was closed on you uh, in 2016. They wanted to lock you up, saying it's, it's a federal elections violation for you to make a movie about Obama three years before. So, so this shows how anti-free speech, and the same Democrats on the Federal Elections Commission, as you know, uh, wanted me arrested as well. Uh, for my films. So, so Joel, let's just remember where we'd be if Hillary got in and why this is so dangerous. But let's go back to what you were getting into in your uh, piece breaking down uh, why it's the perfect storm for her to run again. Right, it, we'll get into that. It is the perfect storm. Uh, look, the Electoral College heavily favors Democrats still. Uh, in the key swing states, they're already busy registering new voters, uh, illegal voters, uh, motor voter, you name it. Um, and they certainly have deep state leftists in the government that they expect are going to leak things about Trump right before the election. Tom Arnold, the actor, has been claiming he's got a, uh, a an Access Hollywood type of tape that would damage Trump badly. So Hillary thinks she has a real shot at it uh, no matter what. And what would happen, I think, in that case, if she ever won, and that's why, had she been president now, we would have had, uh, you know, uh, uh, Attorney General James Comey, McCabe, ahead of the FBI, and Loretta Lynch on the Supreme Court. And all of the uh, amendments would be under attack. First Amendment, Second Amendment, Fourth Amendment. And as you mentioned, my movie, Dreams from My Real Father, uh, where I think I proved that Obama's real father was not the Kenyan Obama. He was not the son of a goat herder from Kenya. His father was a Soviet agent who he admits raised him in Hawaii and radicalized him in his youth. And, and by the way, your film, your film yeah. is absolutely conclusive. I mean, it is no it question. is just out of the park documented. You cracked the case. Absolutely. Thank you, Alex. And uh, look, uh, I didn't exactly win at the FEC, like it said on the Washington Post. It was tied three to three. The three Republicans wanted to dismiss it because I'm a media entity like CNN, like Infowars. If you're a media entity, it's been established for 30, 50 years. You're not in an election, you're just giving opinions and information. Three Democrats on the FEC wanted to forward me to the Justice Department for prosecution, so it died three to three. So had Hillary won, she would have appointed another commissioner to break the ties or gotten rid of one of the Republicans, and every conservative would be on a hate speech list. And let's be clear. And you could be prosecuted. The very same time they did that to InfoWars, it actually said, we refer him for Russia collusion to the Justice Department, but then they voted against it. And it's totally insane. But it shows what would have happened if Hillary would have gotten in. And so they think they've got more than a Hail Mary here. Uh, and, and it's all lined up. Like you said, no real candidates are going to run against Trump. Uh, Hillary's got the war chest. She wants to stay in the power structure, at least of her party, so that she can uh, not get indicted. Um, so, right. so, so what do we start doing? ahead of time to defeat her. Because I noticed the Democratic operatives are always saying, leave Hillary alone, she's the past. Their bots attack us and say, Jones, quit talking about Hillary, she's the past. No, no, no. They don't want us exposing her now and going after her now uh, because they want to keep her ready in the bleachers to you know, uh, run out on the field in the fourth quarter. So what do you think is a smart strategist we should be doing against Hillary right now to really savage her? I think the... The main battle is going to be on the voter fraud issue, voter ID issues, because that's where they're waging their battles in all the different states. Uh, I want to point out one other thing from the Democrat point of view. they Some of them may see Hillary as cannon fodder, just like uh, Bob Dole was running against Clinton. They may say, you know what, Trump may be unbeatable. Let's let her be cannon fodder. And we might even be better off with four more years of Trump. We'll tell everybody that he's racist and sexist, and we'll set ourselves up for the ultimate death match for America in 2024, capitalism versus socialism, and maybe they'll have a younger, newer candidate, probably an ethnic candidate, uh, you know, like Joe Biden said about Obama, articulate and bright and clean, but even more radical, another stealth radical. So they may not even care so much about winning a nomination, taking it from Hillary Clinton. That's another reason that she knows the nomination can be hers, but watch out, because the Hillary will want to win at all costs. She has the money. And I think they've specialized in voter fraud for so many years. Back in Chicago, 
You know, every cemetery voted. That's how Obama got into the state Senate in the first place. Uh, so we can, I think the economy and the public is going to get it. The big issue is going to be, can they manipulate the votes? Uh, George Soros, of course, the uh, voting machine manufacturer. Uh, what a coincidence that he's in that business. I think yeah, he owns Brennan a third of the business. machines people vote on. And, and let's also not forget, Joel, that they're going to be trying to have race riots. Like they've tipped their hat, uh, their hand. They want to sabotage the economy. So they've got a lot of things going that they think will allow them to defeat Trump. And they also keep saying, don't worry, he's anomaly. We're going to get him out of there in one term now. So you're right. They're confident con men. They think they can defeat Trump. Hillary is running. I think Hillary is running and they feel like she has a, she knows she has a path to the nomination and they feel that there is a path to defeat Trump. Even if they don't defeat Trump, I think we're, they're going to spend the next four years uh, agitating race uh, baiting and registering illegals and trying to have that ultimate death match against a personality that's not as strong as Trump. But Hillary absolutely has, I think, the ability through her $10 billion of free earned media, don't forget. People forget it was 95% negative about Trump on the earned media. You've got Tom Arnold saying he's got damning tapes. Uh, anything could happen. So the stakes are going to be so high in 2020, I think patriots are going to have to rally once again to prevent Hillary Clinton from closing the door on the Constitution. Do you think Drudge's prophecy is coming true that it will just be President Hillary out in the future in a, in a glass jar with bubbles like a science fiction movie? If it was up to Hillary, she would do it. She's probably... Uh, you know, using some of that billion dollars to see how she can be preserved. Uh, a lot of our thinking that, well, she's too frail, uh, she's been fainting and falling down her whole life. I have inside sources that she's always kind of been in some level of frail health. So from her point of view, it's nothing really that new, whereas conservatives are just kind of seeing it on display for the first time because she's out in the public so much. Uh, but I think she'll tape herself together in any No, exactly. Possible. She's always been a little Coke bottle glasses, little frail vampire bat. Correct. It doesn't mean she Correct. can't climb up on top of us with her little tooth, her little her little Nosferatus, and cut a little circle and lap some juicy blood up when she represents pedophiles and everything else she's involved in. I mean, this is a vampire bat from hell. We're going to come back, do five more minutes with Joel Gilbert, then I'm going to shift gears into a bunch of other news. Stay with us. Remember, they're trying to censor us and block us. Tell folks about your local radio stations. Tell them about local TV. Spread those live links to Infowars.com, the live video and audio feeds. That's how we bypass the censors. You, you are the resistance. So we kicked off the Hillary for Prison movement. It turned into Lock Her Up. We put 100,000 T-shirts on the streets. We've got a new one that's Re-Elect 45 that I think should be the seminal shirt at Infowarsstore.com. Uh, we've got some of Joel Gilbert's films as well. If you haven't seen Dreams of My Real Father, they tried to put him in jail for it. I mean, wow, they don't like Joel Gilbert. They don't like me. But, Joel, you're a smart guy. Let me bring this up. They've really got it out for you, for myself, for Roger Stone, for others, because we've been very effective. Conservatively, your Danny Williams film, that only cost $35,000, um, reached close to 40 million people in key targeted demographic urban black areas. They really, it, it really resonated, and we saw the poll numbers uh, go that way. Uh, you see Trump doubling his numbers with black males, doubling his numbers with Hispanics uh, in, in uh, many polls. I mean, they're really panicking. But then you look at their men against women angle, all white people are racist angle, uh, abolish ICE angle. And then Alex Jones, uh, you know, was, was, was mean to shooting victims' families and Trump knows him. I mean, that's one of their main campaign things, and I just don't think that's going to be successful. Why do you think they're going with that? Or, I mean, give me your media expertise on what you think they're going to do, because I'm just selfishly wanting to know your view. Yeah, look, uh, socialism and liberalism is completely vapid. It's void of facts. It's void of any reason to support economic policies where you take property from the individual, where the government controls everything and everybody, where you need a police force to force people to work. And somehow this is going to reach happiness, uh, utopia, peace on earth with the head of the party as the god on earth. This entire system has been tried in the 20th century and it resulted in 150 million people killed in peacetime in their own countries. 
So th there's no policy they can possibly run on. So they're desperate to think of things that might say, oh, uh, you know, he's so mean or he knows this guy. And they just don't have any creativity. Uh, socialism itself is a war against creativity. So they don't have any left. Uh, they proved themselves, the Clintons proved in the 1990s that somebody can commit rape and sexual abuse and the voters don't care. Uh, so they're pretty stupid to try something like that against Trump in the last election. When he didn't saying, even oh, do it, and then it reminds everybody of what they did. <laughs> exactly. So they just lack any creativity, an ounce of creativity. There's the one that colluded with Russia. They paid $12 million to the DNC to pay Fusion GPS to pay a bunch of Russian KGB. By the way, did you see it? $300,000 per page. So they're so uncreative, all they can do is say, uh, 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 Trump, Trump colluded with Russia. They have nothing. They have no creativity in their minds. And this is the kind of stuff you're going to get. Exactly. Gets exactly. I didn't even know this till this weekend. Nunes is, is going after 45, 44 people now. And what he released was, did you know they created another Fusion GPS that was really part of it? And they gave it 50 million. And then Nunes found another 20 million. So 50, 18, 20. I mean, we're talking about close to ninety million dollars here that they spent on these on this stuff. What what is that? Well, let's circle the conversation back. Hillary was funding the DNC because they were broke. They got broke again, paying off Russians to uh, to write all this fiction. So the DNC is broke again. So Hillary has the same opportunity she did four years ago. She can offer to fund the DNC if she can cause the shots. That way she's gonna control what happens, control the debates, the schedule, and make herself the nominee. It's, she's just gonna repeat the same losing formula, except you've gotta be aware of the voter fraud. Joel Gilbert, you are absolutely on fire, my friend, and, and you're on target, and it absolutely makes sense, and we just have to get organized and figure out how we're gonna to try to counter this. And, uh, make sure that we do make the country great again. It's a race against pure evil. Uh, God bless you. Folks can find your films at InfoWarsStore.com or JoelGilbert.net. And, and join us again soon and tell us about the next project you've got uh, coming out. Okay, I'll be hosting on Friday, uh, the fourth hour, so I'll be updating the audience at that time. Okay, fantastic. We'll be right back with a bunch of clips, a bunch of breaking news I haven't even gotten to yet. Back in 60 seconds. Please stay with us. We've got Theresa May trying to sabotage the Brexit, and the British voters are hopping mad. We've got Macron walking back mass migration, tells migrants to succeed in Africa after he called for 200 million Africans to come to Europe. <laughs> and it, but his actions are opening the borders up, so... Uh, these, these people just don't get how they're awakening, folks. There's also an article up on DrudgeReport.com that's really critical by Michael Snyder from EconomicCollapseBlog.com. Uh, it's posted to Infowars.com. Mass exodus from the church, the percentage of young adults with no religious affiliation, has nearly quadrupled since 1986. And I'm going to talk later in the next segment about why that's happened. It's been done by design. Because these are no longer churches, ladies and gentlemen. They're little devil centers in most cases. So we're going to be looking at all of that. And now i got another article. Dan Lyman, the head of uh, InfoWars Europe with EuropeWars.com. He is here in town uh, working with us on a business visit from his home base in Switzerland. And he's going to be in studio to talk about the awakening of Europe but the next big wave coming in that's bigger than the one we just saw in the last five years and the troops in Austria, Hungary, Poland bracing for the human waves that we've seen those famous drone videos of you know, tens of thousands, like a giant snake. Uh, that is all coming up. Too dangerous. National Postal Service suspends service to another Islamic enclave in Sweden. So now they admit no-go zones all over Europe when just two years ago they had BBC articles, London Guardian articles, you name it, saying Paul Joseph Watson was a white supremacist and was an insane liar, basically. They don't even say that anymore because it blew up in their face. That he claimed there were no-go zones 
Well, he'd just been at one with people threatening to kill him with Joe Biggs and our crew. <sighs> Shootings, bombings, you name it, are, are exploding. And it, it's like Beirut and the British government just put a travel advisory out on going to Sweden. Sweden had the lowest crime rate in Europe after Switzerland. Now it is hellish. And they're bringing in populations that after five years, 90% don't have jobs. And they only deport you if you try to get one. That's in Germany, Sweden. It's the same socialist policy. They want huge, angry, disenfranchised Muslim groups that come from literal dirt floor villages where women are sold on slave blocks and don't know what planet they're on, running around foaming at the mouth on welfare, ready to be politically directed. And after they killed Gaddafi, who was stabilizing much of Africa, it got 20 times worse. It was all planned out. See, if you could industrialize and educate people in North Africa, then you could bring them in. But you can't bring them in from road warrior scenarios. But enough of that. That's coming up. Right now, we are going to go to this little compilation I've seen a lot of these compilations, and I think Trump's right. He tweeted this out today, and, and, and we're going to tweet it out right now. Real Alex Jones, you should retweet it. To remember why the globalists are angry. Remember why the Democrats are so upset. Remember why they're foaming at the mouth. Remember why they are so aggressive and trying to bully people. Because their identity is controlling you and running your life. And they all said Trump couldn't win, or they said Trump didn't want to win. And they said when he won, he, he would never turn the economy around, never have 3% growth rate. Just like they told me when I was 19 years old and went in and tried to audition with a tape and tried to work at a radio station, they said, talk radio doesn't want you, boy, and laughed at me. Then I got my first radio show, and it was number one within a year in the city of Austin, number one, period. And then they fired me because I wouldn't stop talking bad about Bill Clinton. And then the rest is history. So I love them, and we've got the right stuff, and America has the right stuff, and you've got the right stuff, no matter what color you are or where you came from. If you love God, if you love justice, if you have common sense, you've got the right stuff. And we're not going to live dependently under these globalists anymore. But it's important to remember why they hate Infowars, why they hate Trump, why they hate you, why they hate our military, which has been used for bad things, and the globalists are, and there's problems, but it's still men and women that are willing to stand up and do something. Men and women that are willing to fight. You think the cowards like Hillary Clinton and her stolen glory, like Brian Williams, told the same type story about being shot at and, you know, shot down and all this crap? Do you think they like strong people? Little, weak, weaselly people like them are the ones that always serve evil because they lust after power because they don't have innate power. When you have innate power, it's not an arrogance, it's not a pride, it's a understanding. And you don't want to prey on the weak. Not these people, they want to prey on you and your family. So here's the video they don't want you to see. I am officially running for President of the United States. Could he actually win? No freaking way! Which Republican <laughs> candidate has the best chance of winning the general election? Donald Trump. <laughs> There's not going to be a President Donald Trump. Trump will not be president. Trump will never be elected president of the United States. You're not going to be president. A man right? who will never be president of the United States. Donald Trump is not going to be president of the United States to the bank. He will never be president. Donald Trump is not going to become president of the United States. She's at plus 19. Do you think the tapes made a difference? Of course! They made all difference this race is over hillary clinton has raised more than double donald trump vastly outspending him the presidency at about 89 percent for hillary clinton uh, your analytical model has uh, never been wrong now projects hillary clinton to win presidential election 100 percent chance you still think she has 100 percent chance of winning the election mm. i do and what would donald trump have to do to turn things around prayer and hope for a festivist miracle <laughs> This is CNN's coverage of election night in America. The fight for the presidency. Because we don't care. Oh, okay, how Kentucky? Who cares? Kentucky, don't no, care about Indiana. 
Don't care. Indiana with what? West Virginia, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Mississippi, South Carolina, Alabama, Kansas, Nebraska, and Wyoming with its vote. North Dakota and South Dakota, Texas. Uh, uh, up and down the middle of the country, all red. Arkansas, Louisiana, the state of Montana, Missouri. Yes. It was at 80% an hour ago for Clinton. What is it now? 68%. Okay, I uh, got... I'm nervous. Ohio. Oh, 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 hold, hold, hold. Ohio, gone. Idaho. Okay. Yeah, I don't see a landslide here. I don't see it at all. North Carolina. God it. If we need Florida, are you me? Florida. It is panic time. New Georgia. Donald Trump, now the favorite to win the president's. Iowa. <clears throat> New York Times now has it at. 95% chance. Utah. Can still win, but in order to do so, she has to win Wisconsin. Wisconsin. God damn. Arizona. Alaska. Pennsylvania. Michigan. All of what Florida. a night. It do you remember when the New York Times for the entire election in the primaries and right through to election day had Hillary at 98% chance of winning? Now by election day, to hedge their bets, it dropped to 82%, I remember. And you just saw the pundit talk about that from election night. And then as the night went on, by 10 o'clock at night, they had it projected 50-50. They're not God. They're not God, ladies and gentlemen. They just tell you that there's no such thing as mothers and fathers, and there's only 500 genders. They tell you vaccines are safe and effective. They tell you GMO is good for you. They tell you communism and socialism is good. And it's all this mind game with some pumpkin-headed demon witch with a bunch of scumbag Hollywood trash running around calling for civil war and death and saying we're in a civil war. And I go, okay, we're in a civil war. And they go, ha, ha, ha. All over the news, Alex Jones says we're in a civil war. What a kook. It's only on the cover of USA Today, and he only predicted it all. Gosh, he keeps being right. What do we do? Just ridicule him. Coming to you from deep in red state, Texas, attempting a take back of the California invasion zone known as Austin. I am your host, promoting Americana libertarian classical liberal ideas in the face of the fascistic cult of evil that is the New World Order, George Soros, Hillary Clinton, the big mega banks, the tech titans, all the censors, the EU, the unelected globalist system, the chi -com menace funding the entire vicious system set up to bring down America. But in the 11th hour, in the 59th minute, not just here in the U.S., but all over the world, populist and nationalist, began to rise. That's how it always works in history, not just in movies, that in that final minute, the challenger arises. And when the challenger doesn't arise, evil takes over and you get the nightmares we've seen that killed over 200 million people in the last century and have already killed tens of millions this century. Collectivism in all of its flavors, normally socialist and communist. Now, despite the good things that are happening, here's the bad thing. We're becoming dependent on machines. We're becoming soft. Yes, we're politically awakening to the corrupt globalists, but not to their actual operations, breaking up the family, dehumanizing us, and taking over institutions. Now, I'm not going to engage in a historical treatise right now, because I have some other big breaking news, on how the World Council of Churches and the National Council of Churches in the last 70 years took over via the ecumenical movement, everything from the Catholic Church to the main Protestant Church to the ecumenical uh, system we see today where most churches are New Age brainwashing centers. I mean, you go to mainline Methodist churches, other mainline ones, and you go to the actual study classes, it's Aleister Crowley stuff. Cheap dipped as Rosicrucian. It is Masonic garbage. And I don't mean the classic Masons like George Washington, 
I mean the whole Illuminati Masonic movement that George Washington wrote more than 10 letters on, you can read online Library of Congress in his own handwriting in HD. How the old Masonic movement was being taken over by devil worshipers. And that how our revolution was not the French Revolution. So you have to understand, everything you face, communism, all of it comes out of the Jacobins. And I've had historians and British lords on and Masonic experts. I mean, I've done History Channel and Discovery Channel shows where I'm the experts on Masonry. And you ask, well, how do they make you the expert if you're not a Mason? Because I don't study all the separate sects and handshakes and, you know, the learning of the lore to become a Mason I know it's history. I know what it really is. I know the different branches of it. I know what 33rd degree Masons know. I just skipped ahead to the end. And I was told by family all about it from the time I was a young child because I've had ancestors, some of them that were 33rd degree Masons. Texas was founded by Masons, but they were the original type Masons. Super Christian, totally devout, but it was more of a true Rosicrucian type movement, but not even practicing, proto-Christian from the before it got taken over and manipulated. And then there were always occultic groups claiming that they were actually the true Christians, but it, 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 it goes to the whole Gnostic Christianity. And, and, and I mean, all that really means is hidden, but, but not in the occult sense of a modern occult where you think it means devil. Occult only means hidden because you'll get killed if anybody knows what you're really practicing, AKA the pilgrims trying to find a place to practice true Christianity and build the new Atlantis, which they believe they would do and which they've now done. And I come from those people. So the point is, and it's, it's not bragging, uh, you have to understand the core of all this before you can understand the bigger fight. The Jacobins launched and took over France and killed millions of people, and they targeted the upright. They weren't trying to get rid of the royalty. They were getting rid of one branch of royalty, and then they brought in Napoleon Bonaparte after that. So they always bring in communism. It was not Karl Marx or Engels that invented it. It was, the, it was the Jacobins. They were the communes, the guillotines, all of it. Nine-day work week, change the calendar, abolish the family. You've, you've, you've heard of all that before. And so that's where we are today and they took over the churches. They tricked them into becoming 501c3 to become charities so they would lose their First Amendment power of being outside the government under separation of church and state. See, Christians have been taught, oh, Thomas Jefferson's horrible. He had separation of church and state, and that's why we can't have, you know, our kid hand out Christmas cards or say they love Jesus or have I love Jesus on their lunchbox. Your child has a total right as a private independent citizen to do that. The, the school can't say you will serve this branch of religion. So they turn that around, overthrew the First Amendment, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. And so once you see that set up, and once you understand that, then they just took over all the churches, told them they couldn't be political, claimed everything under the sun is political. The Democrats want to arrest me and Joel Gilbert for making films about Obama. Yeah, Obama deception and dreams of my real father. They said violated Federal Elections Commission. They say Drudge violates the Federal Elections Commission and they want him shut down. They came shy of one vote of a criminal indictment or referring criminal indictment to the Justice Department of Matt Drudge for his website linking to the news. So I digress. I was going to say earlier, mass exes from the church, the percentage of young adults with no religious affiliation has nearly quadrupled since 1986. And they bring in the video games, they bring in the slime fights, they bring in the paintball, and no one wants to go to the church because they're not churches, they're social clubs. What they need to hear is real teaching about the world and the nature of good and evil and the spiritual world all around us because in that is the spiritual power and people will feel it and they will see it and you won't be able to keep them away from it. I guarantee you that if I went and started a church, within two years it'd have 10,000 members every Sunday. And I'm not even that good of a preacher. I would just lay out the Bible and talk about the contest between good and evil and compare it to every day. It'd be three hours of preaching every Sunday. 
People aren't in the churches because they're not hearing what the church really is. A coming together of the brethren, an understanding, and then a launching of that operation out into the world to save people. But now you've got the great falling away taking place because they shut the churches down. And I'm not saying you can't have the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, a church that's 501c3. There are a lot of people that still preach the gospel under 501c3, but there's so few of them that, 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 that you ask, why is everybody falling away? Because they got rid of the real churches and the real Holy Spirit being in those churches. Dan Lyman, who heads up InfoWars Europe and is doing a super good job covering Davos and all the different no-go zones, Bilderberg, you name it, uh, had quite the adventures. We're trying to get him to I got to get set up to start hiring some more crew because he's been a one-man wrecking ball so far. And he heads up EuropeWars.com. He's in studio with us. Great to have you here visiting the ATX, my friend. Uh, we're going to get back to you in a minute and break down just all of the, the scale of the invasion. Obviously, the next wave's here. Uh, Macron walking back his statements about bringing in 200 million uh, North Africans. Obviously, he's still trying to do it, but now he's having to back off on the statement. We're going to get to that all here in just a moment. Uh, breaking news on Infowars.com. Go away. Liberals rejecting Hillary 2020 in mass. Sorry, liberals. You voted for Bernie. She took the nomination, and she's got billions. The Democrats are broke. She owns you. See those eyes? She owns you. It's called a megalomaniac psycho trip. It's called a power trip, and she owns you, and that's the way it is. <laughs> it's a Kit Daniels article. Uh, also, this is happening more and more. It's up on Infowars.com from Chris Manahan from InformationLiberation.com. Blogger rats out source to aid Mueller witch hunt. Media cheers her breaching all journalistic codes. And so more and more, I won't talk to Democrat reporters and leftists because they'll lie about what I've said, they'll misrepresent, and they will then, if you do tell them something off record, they will burn you every time. They have no standards. You cannot work with them, and they're getting worse. So that's all coming up. Obviously, we're going to have extended live coverage tonight, not just till 6 o'clock with the war room, but right through uh, 8 o'clock Central and after when President Trump makes the announcement of his Supreme Court nominee. So be sure and know that that's happening tonight and take part in the information warfare. Spread the live links with everybody you know. Uh, now, again, before we go to uh, Dan Lyman, just briefly here, it's the second American Revolution sale. We don't have new sales yet. I come up with some new ones. We're going to launch on Wednesday. So today and tomorrow are the last days to get 50% off many of our best-selling items like Brain Force, Survival Shield X2 is 40% off. It's already discounted too much. Knockout Sleep Support, Silver Bullet is $9.95 and free shipping. Same stuff sold by Whole Foods for $20 or more. You just cannot beat that deal. Super Mail Vitality, 50% off, free shipping, low in stock. DNA 4, 50% off with free shipping. That's a huge deal. The Real Red Pill Plus now with energy, 50% off, free shipping. And it just goes on and on. Super Blue, fluoride-free toothpaste products, 4 to 5 of colloidal silver and iodine. Those are 50% off and free shipping. These are some of the best deals ever on these items. Alexa Pure Breeze is $100 off the four-stage ion filter. Leading competitors are... $500, $600. When we first started selling these, they were $300, but the price has gone down. So right now, it's $149. At $250, it's a great deal. So for your children, for yourself, and to fund the InfoWar, check out Alexa Pure Breeze and their water filters as well, not just air filters, at InfoWarStore.com. Or call toll-free. We can answer all your questions 24 hours a day and take your orders as well. 888-253-3139. But you built InfoWars, and you've built and have funded our expansion. And in the face of Soros and Hillary's assaults and their lawsuits, we're winning, but only because you have gotten past the censors, you've shared the articles, you've prayed for us, and you have bought the products. Uh, again, Dan Lyman is an American writer, political analyst, and culture commentator. After years of fronting a successful rock man, he answered the call to truth journalism and defense of Western civilization. Dan now serves as foreign correspondent for InfoWars uh, Europe. And he's at Citizen Analyst on Twitter, at Facebook, at Citizen Analyst as well. Uh, Dan, great to have you here. Great to be here. Thanks so and much. You've, you've gone to Australia you know, on, on your own dime. You've done so much for the fight. We really appreciate you. Uh, let's get into what you'd characterize as what's happening in Europe now, the awakening, but also the globalist uh, counterstrike. They appear to be much bigger than the last uh, battering ram of tens of millions of uh, military-age men. 
Well, yeah, I mean, it seems like we're watching the simultaneous invasion of North Amer through North America and also in Europe. And it's happening at the same time. It's happening in many of the same ways. And we were just uh, we were just watching um, some other stuff back from 2015. And it's like it's amazing to see this stuff playing out again. Um, so back then there was about you know hundreds of thousands that poured into Europe from Africa and from the Middle East through Turkey and uh, also across the Mediterranean route. And uh, and then it kind of cooled off a little bit uh, supposedly. And now we have a completely new invasion going on uh, across the Mediterranean again. But of course Italy is not really as receptive as they were in the past. So it looks like they're using Spain now uh, more often and also they they've kind of forged a new route through the Balkans uh, there was a previous Balkan route that went up through Macedonia Serbia and into Hungary that was shut down temporarily uh, they found another way to get up through they call it the mosque route and uh, the foreign minister of Hungary has recently noted that the the new surge that he has seen some evidence of could be worse than the 2015 and I think that of course we should have expected that to be coming in coming at some point and let's be 100% clear, this is the admitted UN plan. The UN says, oh, it's gotten so bad, we'll build the refugee centers in Spain, in France, all over, and then we'll bring the people in and incentivize them, and then the UN will represent them inside your country, and the EU will declare an emergency, and it's going to use its military to block Italy and others from stopping tens of thousands a week pouring in off Soros-owned Zodiac boats. And when I say that, Soros brags. He spent $500 million this year alone just on the ferries. So they call them rescues. No, the people are being picked up 100 miles off Libya, and then they are being brought in. I mean, imagine every few hours, boats landing, literally invasion boats with George Soros. You can't make this up. You can't, and there has been some interesting action on that. I just received a press release from AFD, which is alternative for Deutschland. That's um, the kind of the opposition party there. They're growing very quickly in numbers, and they're growing very powerful. They have actually filed criminal charges against some of these NGOs. That Some of them operate out of Germany, some out of the Netherlands, some out of uh, Spain. But they have just filed criminal charges against uh, the organizations that are involved with them, as well as just some of the, the shit. It violates human smuggling, when, especially with some children, where you say, get 100 miles off, we'll grab you and illegally dump you on the shore. If you were I did that, we'd be locked up and we should. Right. And in some cases, I think it's more like 10 to 12 miles. They don't have to get far out at all. No. And the boat no, 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 no. I, I got it flipped. You're right. It's 12 miles, and then they bring them the 100. You're right. Yeah. It's only like 120 miles out. You're, you're right. Right. And so, yeah, yeah, so they bring them out 10, and then they bring them across. Right, and some of these journeys are just, they, they boggle the mind and the distance. It, when they just came into uh, into Spain and Valencia, that was a, like a thousand kilometer journey where they were just off the coast of Libya to start off with. And a lot of people have pointed out they could have easily have just brought them to Tunis and Tunisia. And uh, the port there was safe. It was definitely somewhere that they could have gone. You're supposed and to let's be clear, when they blew up Gaddafi and ruined all that infrastructure he'd built, it opened it all up to uh, Central Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, in these huge migration lanes to bring them right into Europe. And he did warn that that would happen ahead of time. Well, another interesting development is that Matteo Salvini has been in Libya meeting with the Libyan government, offering to um, incentivize them to build migrant uh, holding centers, detention centers in the south of Libya, not even at the, at the coast to keep them from even reaching some of the, the port. And let's be clear, that's a good thing to do because... Africa's population is about to double. It's already astronomical. If I could pull up the, the latest census on Africa, our best estimation, we could take 500 million. It wouldn't do anything. It, it's, it's just insane. This will only collapse everything. We have to stabilize Africa. Absolutely. If you've watched the gumball presentation, that, tell, that tells you everything you need to know about uh, how it's totally impossible to mitigate the, the issues of, of the third world without staying strong as countries uh, on our, our own end. That we and that's Numbers USA. I believe so. That's the right one. Yeah. We should get Numbers USA back on because and that's what's crazy. You read the globalist a report in 49 to his majesty. The British had it commissioned. And they said we need to go in, stabilize, industrialize these countries, and they'll only have two kids. Because if you believe in overpopulation, it's happened in some areas. Instead, they go, no, we're just going to balloon their population, then use them as cheap labor, and then later a weapon against the West in reverse colonization. They've done everything they can when you've got people starving in a country to not give them their own science to feed themselves, but to just feed people, then they double, then you got to feed double, then you got to feed double again. It's, impo it's impossible.
And what they do to these neighborhoods, they completely change the neighborhoods. I mean, we've seen there's no-go zones all over the place, uh, and they're growing in number, and, and they get downplayed as a not a no-go no zone because you can, technically, you could walk into them, but you don't want to. I, I was just in one in uh, in Italy, and it was uh, I wanted to walk through to get some, some footage, and I just didn't feel comfortable entering. <laughs> Uh, our crew got death threatened continually. I mean, it's it's almost, as, well, I mean, it's actually more, more dangerous than it is being a conservative. Dan Lyman, who heads up the InfoWars News Bureau and is starting to recruit some great folks over in Europe, is here he's very prolific. He's riding shotgun with us a little bit in the next hour. We've also got Stan Deo giving his perspective on world events. But look at this article. Far-right pair banned from Auckland Council venues. They've been just banned from anywhere to speak. And it's Laura Southern who they call an extremist. And then Stefan Molyneux, they say you're a cult leader. I mean, you couldn't call Stefan Molyneux he's the opposite. He's like an individualist type guy. So uh, England's actually physically banning Michael Savage and thousands of others coming in if they criticize radical Islam. But meanwhile, we'll bring in Somalis, you name it, from places that are fully failed countries. And I'm not saying all Somalis are bad people, but statistically one of the highest crime rates, rape rates, suicide uh, attack rates. Here's an article on uh, EuropeWars.com. Somali sentenced to community service for raping Swedish minor. And, and, and that's why Europe Wars is like a clearinghouse for this because it's like every hour there's a new one where they're cutting a little baby's head off and the police cover it up or uh, too dangerous. Uh, the Postal Service in Sweden is, is, is no longer uh, delivering to many large areas of cities to deliver packages to migrant suburbs saying it's too dangerous. The British government, the UK has issued a warning not to go in these areas. Just a few years ago, Dan, they were denying this. So get into the no-go zones. You've been into them. I have, and I actually have been in them uh, years, a couple years before the real invasion, which started in 2015. They were around uh, long before that. So I was uh, traveling, uh, I spent a month traveling through Europe in 2012, and I inadvertently ended up staying in a couple of them where I couldn't even believe that I was in Europe, uh, Hamburg, Germany, um, and in, also in Paris. And I had never heard of these things, a no-go zone, or just, just I did, hadn't even heard that Europe had changed so much. I was kind of naive back then. And, uh, and we encountered issues in Stockholm. Home, Sweden. There were Iraqi men who were uh, menacing my wife, and I couldn't believe that I was in Sweden at that time as well. So I've just watched this developing over time. And well, they're also so used to how polite Europeans are. I can tell you, anywhere in Texas, I don't care if you're a Hispanic guy, black guy, a white guy, somebody starts menacing your wife, they're going to get their ass kicked. Right. But I mean, I've been in Europe just filming on the street, and then Muslims run over and say, "You, you know, infidel, turn your camera off. You don't film me." And I'm like, "Dude, I'm filming the Parliament. Sorry, you're 100 yards away on the shot." And then I'm like, they'll start threatening me, and I'll say, well, let's go. Then they back off. But I guess they're so used to Europeans, Swedish men especially. Well, I mean, what are they like? Well, uh, they, they can be very intimidating for sure. And, uh, I mean, what, what's up with the European men? Oh, uh, that's that's a good question. You know, I just lived in Iceland last year for a year, and I expected this kind of healthy, uh, kind of a Viking culture, very manly. It is completely not that case at all. Uh, I would say that that feminism and cultural Marxism has dulled a lot of guys down, and it's just the, the cool thing to do is to be a soy boy at this point, and uh, that's uh, prevalent across Europe until you reach the eastern regions, and things are a little bit different over there. Yeah, why is it the east now that's, that's like classical? Uh, I mean, they're like Western Europe we heard about. It's, uh, I, I think a lot of them would attribute that, attribute that to being kind of behind the Iron Curtain for a long time and not being exposed to a lot of the things that Western Europe was exposed to. And uh, they've just been through hard times, and they don't want to go back to those hard times. So uh, when you go to places like Poland and Hungary... They know to reject everything the left tells them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's no perfect place, but these places are far and away better better off than, than a lot of these uh, Western countries. Well, I've, I've been told by Roger Stone that went and spoke to some of the presidents, people in East, Eastern Europe. He said InfoWars stuff is everywhere. I'm not bragging, but that's a that's a good ping. I mean, as an InfoWars uh, you know, uh, head of Europe operations, what do you see as, as far as people's attitudes towards InfoWars Trump? Uh, definitely more pro-Trump. Pro uh, I encountered a lot of Trump backlash in uh, in Iceland when I was living there, and also in uh, just in like Ireland. I have family there, very anti-Trump. But uh, but once you get into places like uh, uh, Croatia and Slovenia, uh, Hungary, it's it's a lot more just a generally a more conservative feeling culture. Um, they just and, and they don't like to talk politics as much either. People in in Western Europe will will jump. You know, as soon as they hear you're American, they'll make a Trump trope right away and uh and they don't have no problem saying that because they feel comfortable that they're surrounded with people who who think they think all think the same way and uh, it's just not the case europe especially eastern europe is waking up but we see signs in germany france poll numbers show nationalist common sense is exploding as well
Absolutely. And, you know, when you look at the, the polling numbers, I just did an article recently, immigration and terrorism, they just dominate when they do these public opinion polls as to what is the issue that is most important to you and, and the, in the hierarchy. And immigration is number one, as it is in uh, in the United States as well, of course. That's why we have Trump. And also, you were mentioning Australia and New Zealand. I was just in Australia as well. And they have the same issues in Australia that we have uh, in, in Europe and in North America with immigration and the related crime surge. And just what I get feedback from people in Australia and New Zealand, you'd think they're a bunch of soy boy commies, but actually they're more awake than the U.S. or even Eastern Europe from what I've seen, but that's why their government keeps their thumb on them and tries to shut down speech and tries to ridicule it because they know that they got the tiger by the tail with the Aussies. Absolutely, definitely. And uh, and like like you said, New Zealand's a little, little more... Uh I don't know if they're more woke, but they just don't have the same issues there yet. I don't know if they just haven't been pounded with uh, just hardcore amounts of immigration. We were just in Melbourne, and they said they're, they're doing 150,000 new residents every year. And, of course, a lot of these residents, they're, they're not Australians necessarily moving in from the country. And the issue is it'd be fine if they came in and assimilated. They're brought in, and the left takes control of them and keeps them disenfranchised and has no intention of trying to even create an economy for them. Right. They always tell us we need these people as workers and as taxpayers. As we well know, a lot of the migrants that have, ri have arrived since 2015 in, in Europe, at least like 90% of them in many areas, it's, it's 90%, yeah. don't have a job. So, of course, they're not paying taxes. I mean, Germany's, the UN's own numbers are 84 to 90. I mean, we see those. I mean, I mean, well, I've read all over that, that if you try to get a job, then you're deported. Right, there are stories like that. If you're a productive migrant, then then it's a little bit harder. That's just like in the United States. When you play by the rules, you immigrate the right way. It's a much harder for you than it is to just show up at the border. And Trump's just trying to, like, Ellis Island, do some checking, make sure you're not a criminal. If you fit in, I mean, he, he actually kind of has a classical Americana view on immigration. But he says, we got to turn the economy back on. we got to be boomtown, and then we're going to vet people. We're not going to take, you know, mentally ill people, criminals. Sorry, keep your ass where you're at. Absolutely. And you, and you have uh, just recently in Italy when I was down there uh, talking to a, a journalist down there and, and the town that I was in Turin, which is where Bilderberg was, uh, crawling with migrants. I, like I said, I was staying by one. I had a thousand migrants that were squatting in one little community. And he said, how could we possibly be bringing these people in as taxpayers and workers when when employment is, is close to 20 percent and for the youth is closer to 40 percent? So not only take Spain, the youth unemployment's like 60 Right, exactly. So not only are you bringing in the new foreign population supposedly to pay the taxes, you're driving out the younger folks, the, the entrepreneurs, the, the intelligent people. Oh, it creates a brain drain. I mean, just the windmills bankrupted Spain. And, and then now they're going to try to bring in 10 million illegals. To, I mean, I, I was in Italy. And under every tree, and there's not very many trees in Rome, under everything, there'd be like 30, 40 people, feces everywhere, and the locals are just like, oh, my God, this is horrible. I don't care if it was an Indian businessman in a business suit or, you know, some, you know, Roman woman with beautiful red hair or whatever. I just remember they're all disgusted by it, what, no matter what color you are, because they're all productive, walking along going, what the hell is this? No one's even taking care of them. They're just squatting everywhere. Right, creating uh, piles of trash, like you said, all over the place. Um, yeah, the, and, the, and the videos that come out every single day, you, you can't even do a story on these things sometimes because it's just like a viral video, and it's in Europe somewhere, and it's, it's a migrant in a fountain using it as a toilet, or you have this video you're rolling right here. They, uh, they're always attacking groups. They attack women. They attack uh, lonely people. They, it's never like a one-on-one. -on -one. They don't fight fair. Uh, there's a disgust of sexy women. And then, and then remember, in Cologne, the mayor said, she's a feminist, don't wear short miniskirts. The German women want to go out and, 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 and be in a beer hall and wear miniskirts. I'm all for it. But they said, no, sexy German women, it's your fault. You're getting raped and attacked because the Islamists see a sexy woman. They don't think they can get her. So they, you kill somebody kicking them downstairs like that. Right, absolutely. That girl, I don't know what her recovery was, but she was messed up for a while. And then everybody else pays the price as well. Like in Sweden, they just canceled their largest uh, music festival they have every year. That's, you know, Swedish youth, and I'm sure Europeans from around, all around, go to these festivals. They now, don't you want to beat that guy's butt when he throws that woman down the stairs? Vile. Vile. And this kind of stuff happens all the time. We just had someone, a migrant uh, decapitate a baby on a train. Oh, yeah. Tell, uh, tell folks about that. I, and actually, the police are trying to cover it up. Right. Yeah, exactly. And they're not letting them report on it. Uh, that was a story that I just caught on the plane uh, on the way over here. But uh, just, just vicious attacks all the time, especially on women and kids. A lot of kids get attacked as well. Elderly people. 
uh, people over the age of 90 getting sexually assaulted in, in old folks' homes, and it's, it's, it's all getting papered over. What's this issue. thing where I, uh, we're in the, in, in, with the Islamic uh, invaders? Because I just keep it every day. What's up with raping 90-year-old women? I'm not going to rape anybody, but what, what's up with raping like women that are half dead? In, and that sounds gross. Sounds satanic to me, uh, and apparently it's they don't care if it's a, a young child under the age of 10 or an elderly woman over the age of 90. So uh, there's something more going on than just uh, the pleasure. It's act. just the act of power. Mm -hmm. Domination. Because I don't want to rape a super sexy woman. That doesn't sound fun. But, man, a 90-year-old a, a woman hooked up on tubes? <laughs> Sounds like hell on earth, man. It's evil. It's evil. Definitely. Well, sorry, we're exposing it. This all comes out of Soros. It all comes out of the U.N. It's their admitted plan. But guess what? Your plan ain't working. And a lot of the immigrants you brought in are waking up to you, and they don't want to go your route either. Dan Lyman, stay there. We'll be back with the third hour, and we've got other surprise guests coming up. Tomorrow's news today, newswars.com. Dan Lyman's in studio with us. He's going to be popping in throughout the next few days. He's, he's uh, visiting the InfoWars News Center here in Austin, Texas. He lives in Switzerland. He heads up uh, InfoWars Europe. Stan Deo's coming up to get into the ring of fire that he's for years has been predicting would really fire up, and it certainly has. Well, he also just did a big expedition to the Middle East and Africa uh, looking for what they believe is the mythical Garden of Eden. It was written about by all those cultures. Uh, that's coming up with Stan Deo. We may have an extra special guest popping in as well towards the end of this next hour. But that said, um, we're going to be doing extended live coverage tonight right through 8 o'clock Central with Trump's announcement uh, of who the new Supreme Court nominee is. And we're going to go at least an hour or two into that tonight. And remember, it's part of the resistance that the live feeds uh, that will be available on satellite to TV and radio, but to you, the listeners and viewers, share those links on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, the live feeds. That's how we get past the censors. That's how we get around what they're doing. And we're doing it all the time against their shadow bands and all of it. And they get so upset. And Dan, despite, uh, you know, last year, uh, Zuckerberg promising Merkel that, you know, he would censor the anti-open borders people. It hasn't worked. And I don't see a place in Europe where... Uh, the elections aren't being won by nationalists. How do you expect the globalists to strike back? That's a good question. Uh, we see a, a lot of things happening even in the UK today. There's been some stuff developing with Theresa May and Brexit uh, where her kind of her cabinet is falling apart. Of course, uh, Merkel just, just held on by the skin of her teeth to her coalition there in Germany. So that's actually why I think my only speculation as to why Macron keeps going back and forth about this issue because one minute he's, he's saying let's prepare for 200 million Africans to invade. The next one he's saying we need to build Afro, uh, it's to confuse people. He's, he's going to go with the globalist deal. He's just trying to pacify. Right, because otherwise they probably uh, they probably oust him as well. Uh, his popu his uh, popularity ranking is very, very low right now. It's, uh, I think, sub 40, if I'm not mistaken. So people are not happy with the job that he's doing. Of course, we're going to see. And he'll come over and say he loves Trump and then say nationalist or leprosy, Trump scum, hoping no one doesn't like go. That's the worst thing is to say both things. Right. He's spineless. He has really no no position other than whatever his uh, overlords tell him to, the position to have. But he's kind of one of the last ones that's holding on now at this point because now Merkel is threatened. Um, obviously, in Sweden, we have huge developments with the Swedish Democrats. They're doing really well. So we've just watched this wave creep from east to west. And now it's like just converging in down on uh, basically on France and Spain. And I know why. Brussels. Exactly. I know why um, there's such a cultural, historic memory in Eastern Europe. That's over 100 Islamic invasions took place. Um, and, then, and then after that, the Nazis came in and the Russians came in. They've been through so many invasions there in the whole crossroads of the world that they know and, and, and they understand uh, what's happened before. And they understand that the whole ethos of their nations was defeating the Islamic invasions. You know, when I was in college, they taught that we invaded in the Crusades, and Hollywood movies uh, show that. Uh, Ridley Scott, you know, makes these movies. No, they invaded us for 300 years before we turned the tide when they almost took Germany and Poland and then had to do La Reconquista in Spain, everywhere. We didn't invade the Muslims. And so that's just the reality. Absolutely, and that's that's really the importance of getting these people in power, like Victor Orban, Matteo Salvini. They will invoke the true history once they have the platform and they have the support of the people. And then at that point, I think it'd be a lot harder to get them out for for the EU uh, folks. And as we keep installing more and more of them in uh, in Austria now, we have a great government there in Austria. They do have their work cut out for them, but uh, it, they're there. So now they have the support of the people. The movement continues to grow. You have Salvini saying he's calling for a league of leagues. 
He's going to start binding all these movements together. He wants to kind of be the figurehead of that. It's going to create a huge problem for Brussels. I think it's starting to basically fracture the entire uh, political spectrum in Europe, uh, just cracking it in half right now. What's panic some is the left joining the right because the left's going, oh, my God, we're going to lose the social safety net. Exactly, dummies. That's globalist plan. Dan Lyman, I want you to talk about the real history more on the war room today and with us tonight during that live broadcast, if you can. We'll be back with Stan Deo. Dan, great to have you here in person. Thanks so much. Really impressed with your work. You're awesome. Cheers. Well, during the whole volcano situation in the Big Island, Kona, record level uh, earthquakes, the worst I've ever had since they've been recording it for over 100 years with seismographs, uh, huge uh, lava ejections, as everyone knows, other areas of the Pacific Rim really coming to life. With Stan Deo that I heard you know, 10 years ago predicting this would happen, he's an interesting guy, engineer, worked on a lot of secret projects, you name it. But he's been out of the country uh, you know, investigating a, a ancient sites, which is even more interesting. You know, where's the old you know, explorer out there? Uh, because they're still finding new species almost every day. They're still finding new islands. We haven't even explored the underseas yet. So we haven't explored much of Siberia. Humans tend to congregate in just you know, areas that have no idea what's going on uh, in the more remote reaches. So he's going to get into that and so much more. But uh, Stan, I wanted to talk to you first just as a smart guy and as a fellow Texan here. I think you're still in Texas. Um, with uh, your view on Trump, on what's happening globally, the moment in history, if you were a historian 100 years from now, looking back on 2018, and all the things that's happening, all the tectonic changes, the cultural changes, the galactic changes, uh, you know, as, as they say, it's as above, so below. Uh, I don't describe the whole occult thing, but it's true, as above, so below. Where do you think we are in the compendium and the spectrum of human existence. I, I feel like at a gut level and see that we're at a jump point or a dying point. I think we're at a major crossroads and I think humanity and its survival instinct and its spirit is starting to reach for a better future and the globalists are panicking. But so just in the six, seven minutes we have in the left of this segment, how would you talking to your, say your grandchildren describe this moment in history? Well, if we were all still alive together, I would say that this was the, the moment that America, the modern Babylon, began its collapse into uh, history. I think that uh, there are so many things in play at the moment, geophysically and politically, that the United States is going to be destroyed unless we have some magical way to reverse it. I, I just think the whole world is against us at the moment. And so Trump's like some last-ditch effort of people that aren't complete traitors to try to turn it around. Yes, yes. Look, we pray for him every day here in this house, twice a day, uh, at least. And, you know, I, I I marvel that at his age that he is able to handle the fight like he Well, is he did take it. on a, a challenge worse than Hercules cleaning out the Aegean stables. <laughs> yeah, he did. It's worse than a swamp. Uh, you know, on our show images page on standale.com, um, we, I'll be referring to some of these images today. If you go to uh, standeo.com and click on the link, uh, let me just see the link, which is under the YouTube sign, uh, you'll see um, uh, where it shows, show images next to the microphone. And All right, you're already there. Good. You're already there. Okay, go to um, <clears throat> to the image number. Yes, that one. Uh, <laughs> I lost my image here. Sorry, 47, um, 48, which one? Yeah, it's at the very top on the left. The, oh, the very the one top, that, guys. Uh, talking about the 31% the of American voters think a second civil war is likely. And and Holly has put a comment under there because we, about 20 years ago, we visited with the Hopis uh, in uh, Shikom, uh, Shangopa village, the second uh, Mesa. And they told us some prophetic utterances that they had for their people and for the United States. And at that time, they told us that there's going to be a massive civil war based I on... I remember you... How long ago was that? Was That was even with Art Bell or Coast to Coast. When did I hear yeah. you talk about that? was like 15, 20 years ago. When was that? Oh, at least uh, 2001, I think it was. Yeah. I remember you... Pred oh, my gosh. I remember you talking about that and thinking that was wild. Uh, so, so, so go back <laughs> to that. So the Hopis told you that. Yeah, they did. And, uh, and you they know, they, explained... they're, they're well known to be very psychic. Well, yeah, they, they seem to have uh, the knowledge of the people. They call the, the North American Indians the people, and they're the prophecy keepers for them. 
very peaceful uh, people. I, I loved them to death. I could look in their eyes and, and see just honesty. It's something we don't see so much here in the, the modern you know, world out here. Um, but anyway, they, they looked me in the eye, and uh, this particular one um, up on the edge of the cliff there in the second mesa, he said to me, look, out here you see desert between our mesas. Yeah. He said, soon there will be water flowing between here and we will go by canoe between the mesas, and then we will go by land after America has uh, fallen in the Civil War. We will take groups of the survivors with us that will come down to us, and we will march up into the three corners or four corners area near Colorado or in Colorado and form a new nation of man. And that was kind of the, the, the basis of the whole prophecy, uh, saying that we would also be invaded. We first have a civil war. We would weaken ourselves. And then we would be invaded by uh, Russia, China, and a Middle Eastern nation. And he didn't know the name of that nation. Well, from just studying things, uh, it, it, the globalists have invested in China. They plan to use that economically, militarily to do it. But just on Monday, or, or I guess it was Friday, it's Monday now, it came out, Chinese government documents, that they're encircling us, they're economically cutting us off, working with big banks, and, that, and, and, and working for a civil war to collapse the country. And so that's pretty nightmarish because they got a billion, 400 million people, they, they own our debt, and they've, they've got traders working for them. And I don't think the Democrats on average understand, they are literally working for big banks in communist China. Talk about traders. You know, it's an interesting point. Um, uh, Sung Tzu, Articles of War, it, it does say that China, well, let's use China as, as the aggressor at this point, is wise in letting its enemies beat themselves to death and then march in and pick up the pieces. So in, in respect of where we are now, China is fueling the fire between uh, Russia, uh, North Korea as well, but uh, Saudi Arabia and some of the Arabian nations, uh, they're fueling that so that we will beat ourselves to death in the Middle East. And when we've weakened our resources and our armies there, then it's when China uh, will come in and sweep in and try to take all the oil fields and control the energy of the planet from the Middle East. And that fits with the Revelation prophecy about the kings, the 200 million man army, the kings of the east coming into the Battle of Armageddon there in the Megiddo Plain of northern Israel. We're, we're there. We're, we're approaching it like gangbusters. Because there were 200 million people at the time of that prophecy 2,000 years ago, uh, but, but, but now there are, and that's exactly what their military is. And they're actually in these documents training, as you said, to cut off all the resources. As you know, all the big Chinese companies from Africa to Latin America, the Middle East, are... And notice under Bush and the whole Iraq invasion, we gave it to China. We didn't get any of that oil. That's what Trump's talked about. That, that their so-called workers are all military, and they're run by intelligence operatives. It even came out, even the Washington Post admits most are public universities. The communist Chinese have already gotten control of them. They've got the Office of Personnel Management hack. I mean, we're basically already been defeated by China, and Trump is desperately trying to get back control. And all these traitorous Americans are absolutely against it. I know. It's sad. It really is sad. It's just frustrating to watch this happen. <laughs> it's a slow motion, slow motion collapse of the new Roman Empire. That's us. And then and then Trump's desperately trying to stop it. And, and the fools that will be destroyed by this are trying to stop him from saving them. We'll be back. The world is being given a chance at a reprieve. That's the way history works. It's what God's always done. Will we take it? Stan Deo's here with us. I want to get into his archaeological mission and some of the amazing things he's done in the next segment. Briefly, we'll get into four more of the boys. Uh, that's 12 now, so there's two more in their coach. They have to get out. Uh, one diver's died, uh, two divers going in through this huge cave system that's flooded. It's just incredibly heroic stuff. So that's a question, though, that we'll get to next segment. The globalists will say abort babies, don't care about old people euthanizing, but when we see humans trapped in a bad position, we empathize, we want to save them. So that's the, that's the instinct of survival. What about all of us on this planet with the rising water of globalism and communism and tyranny? Let's just cover the boys now and then get into the volcanoes and the trip. Since I mentioned it, I always said it's coming up, but I can never do that. Stan, I mean, what does this bring up in you? watching this heroic stuff happen, those divers going into those caves that are flooded full of mud and debris. Uh, it's, it's amazing. It is amazing, and it re, um, reinforces my, my belief that there are people in our world that still have compassion, you know, uh, to help their fellow man. In this case, two people have already laid down their lives to save these boys. 
And you know, you, you read the report, the statistic, you know, two, two of the rescuers die, and okay, then you read the rest of the article and kind of forget about it. But those those rescuers had people, families, lives, and, and they've laid that all on the line for these uh, young uh, uh, soccer players. And I, I just think it's it's marvelous to see that in a world that's so full of hatred and conflict. Uh, and, and these guys aren't just all tied. They were, the rescuers came in from a lot of places to help. So that's and my the courage it takes to go into a black water flooded hole and then to have the courage to try to bring a child out who isn't even scuba certified. I mean, this is, this is, this is the, this is incredible. The whole world is watching this. It really is. I, I just I, I marvel at this whole operation, and I'm so glad, so thankful that the children at least are, are being saved like this. I tell you, it just comes to that point, because I've read about ships that have jumped over and stuff, and that people have to swim like 50 yards out through the bulkheads. They can't see what's happening. And they'll kind of wait till the end as the water's rising. And in some cases, people are there with their children. And they're trying to like explain to their seven, eight year old, listen, you're gonna have, we're gonna have to swim like two or three Olympic swimming pools or you're gonna die. And you hear about people actually doing it and willing it and making it out, sometimes not. This is just shows you how amazing humans are and what we can do. Yeah, I know. I I, I, uh, I don't know how it would feel to be down in such a cramped space so far underground, you know, with the water just rising up and uh, the, the, the monsoon season starting and, you, you know, the change in the weight of the water on the structures around it might cause cave-ins. I mean, there's just all kinds of problems that could happen. And in spite of all that, these guys have gone down there and made it work. And some of these spaces are three feet wide with the gear and all of it. Talk about claustrophobia. And, you know, trying to get through with your oxygen tank on your back and a child with you. I mean, it's a tight squeeze and you don't want to rip any hoses loose and, you know, hurt the child or yourself. Uh, yeah, it's a challenge. And uh, my hat's off to those guys. I, I don't know that I'd be able to do that. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And you look at the lazy trendies and how hateful they are and cowardly. I mean, you know they'd never do that for anybody. No, no. This generation uh, today, the millennial generation and, and kind of their offspring, are a real disappointment uh, to the founding fathers of this country and to people of my generation and yours. Uh, I'm just so sad to see that they've been steered in such a, a terrible direction. Absolutely. Well, um, Let's go ahead and get into the tectonic stuff that's happening on the planet. You accurately predicted decades ago with, with your own system, looking at these seismic charts that they had about what was really going on and different theories, just like astrophysicists can accurately predict what's going to happen in the weather much better than regular weathermen or women, uh, meteorologists, because they only look at the planet. Well, obviously, the, the sun, the moon, the, the solar winds, that has a bigger effect. So you looked at other things with your own theorems that have ended up to be very, very accurate. So so where is the Earth now in its tectonic behavior? There's something weird going on at the moment. In the last um, month and a half, two months, I guess, the earthquake numbers in the Richter 5 and above have dropped 21%. So when earthquakes in that range don't happen, it's a sign that pressure is building up somewhere. It's not a sign that earthquakes decide to take a vacation. It is the pressure is building up and not releasing in these smaller earthquakes. Now, uh, if you can look at my show images page there at image 43, it's a graph, and click it up, you'll see the drop in the Richter 5 earthquakes. Now, in this map, I have not included 37 earthquakes, Richter 5 or better, that occurred under Kilauea. Um, Kilauea's had over, gosh, 4,800 earthquakes from Richter 1 up in the last um, 30, 30, well, the last eight weeks. So, yeah, there you go. That's the, the graph. So I, I think that what we're seeing planet-wide is a change in the pressures on the surface. We may be, be building up with some really big earthquakes, and I sense from what the government, or USGS, has been telling people in California and the West Coast, um, that we may be seeing the big one or several big ones occur along the west coast of the United States. My guess at this moment is that we'll see the first release at the southern end of the San Andreas Fault near the Salton Sea. There you go. There you go. That's a, a good image from our, our site there. Uh, and, you know, I, when, when officialdom starts to, to kind of agree with what I'm saying on this kind of stuff, I begin to think we are close because they try not to panic people unnecessarily. But at the same time, 
doing their job. They want to give you some warning. And, uh, and isn't, isn't that plate that comes into California way overdue for the big one? It's a, the plate um, is north of there, or Northern California, Oregon, and Washington coast. That's the, the Juan de Fuca plate. And it is like 55 years now overdue for a massive nine point plus earthquake creating tidal waves and a lot of damage on the shore. So yes, it is overdue and we, we need to be conscious of that. Um, I gotta tell you, California's kind of their vote, I wouldn't mind losing their, their political votes at the moment. Uh, if the earthquakes happen and break it up into islands, like they say, they'll be so busy surviving that they won't be able to influence the election so much the way they have been. Might uh, tell Hollywood a few It is things, funny too. though that it's the big anti-American state now and it's the one even mainline geologists say might disappear, but moving more east, what about the mega caldera uh, there at Yellowstone? Because even, main, I remember you 20 years ago saying it was starting to come back to life, and now even mainline science says it's doing some weird stuff. Yeah, it's it's kind of good to be right, I guess, but not really because it's actually happening. Um, they have found, since I started talking about it, an extra magma chamber underneath it, which none of us knew was there. So these, uh, there's... The Yellowstone caldera and the one down in the North Island of New Zealand at the Lake Taupo caldera, those two are of great concern and will probably convert fairly soon. Let's talk about that and then get into your amazing trip. I hope a film's getting made. Looking for the original Garden yes. of Eden with Stan Deo. Yes. Straight ahead, standeo.com. I'm Alex Jones with Newswars.com. Tomorrow's news today. We're on a planet flying through space, heated by a sun, floating on islands of rock on top seas of molten magma. Stan Deo is our guest. I really appreciate him joining us. We have a special guest joining us. I'm going to tell you about in the next segment, but I'm going to have Stan back very, very soon to get more into his discoveries and what he's done. But just in the 10 minutes we have now, uh, daretoprepare.com, standeo.com, uh, Stan, finishing up with the super caldera that we know uh, erupted before, They've got ash maps. It's the USGS. It's not debatable. It covers most of the U.S. And then they say that it's it basically due, maybe now, maybe in 100 years. I mean, I mean, you don't know time-wise, but just the different changes there. And then let's get into uh, your big expedition that we're going to have you back on for a full hour about uh, soon, uh, looking for the Garden of Eden. Well, there have been a couple of things going on. Oh, by the way, uh, I noticed you've got a beard since the last time we were talking and uh, being partial to beards myself. I like yours. It's great. Well, yours you look looks like good, too, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> like it. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, in uh, May of this year, last two weeks of it, uh, my partner's I and one of my businesses, the uh, Black Sea Jewelers, we flew over to Tanzania to uh, prove that the uh, Ngoro Plateau there in Tanzania was the original Garden of Eden site. I had already proved most of the uh, river locations and the stuff that was in the Genesis account in Hebrew. But I wanted to prove that the water source that uh, supplied all the water for the whole plateau did come from a 10,000-foot um, high, uh, like a spring, a, a group of springs. And uh, we couldn't tell from the Google Earth maps and stuff that we had for sure. So we had to trek over there and uh, go up as far as we could by a vehicle and then uh, uh, trek into the uh, the area where the, the Maasai water their cattle even at, uh, at this uh, pond, if you wish. And uh, it was there, it was full of water, and it, it was one of two that we found at the top, which proved that the whole Ngoro Plateau, and particularly the Ngoro Crater, was the Garden of Eden, and uh, of the biblical account and many other ancient accounts. Uh, we were just able to do this by putting the world back together in the computer, uh, where all the continents touched each other in, in the Pangaea-type arrangement, and then we were able to trace all these rivers spoken of by Moses in the Genesis account. Um, and that led also to other things as far as uh, archaeological finds. Uh, I was able to find Atlantis after that. We located the Eden complex and then the Atlantis uh, situation. But you can see that on my YouTube channel, the Atlantis discussion. Uh, and, you know, we can talk next time, too. I, I've got a, another business that we started to, to make EMP shields for houses and all the stuff in your house. And uh, my partner, Tim Cardi, and I have uh, been setting up Oh, I think we've got about 35 uh, products now based on shielding uh, generators, uh, uh, solar collectors, uh, you know, diesel generators, gasoline generators, and your home from the pulse of electronic uh, magnetic pulse 
from a bomb. Oh, I understand. You're not you're not talking about an EMF shield just for like l regular cell no, phones. No, you no, mean, no. You mean a capacitor or type system to actually block it in the chain? It takes the the sudden rise in voltage uh, from an EMP attack or a pulse, whether it comes from the sun or from an enemy. It takes that, which generates huge high voltages. And just would fry all your electronics. And no, stuff no, I understand. I hadn't had time to look at it. I want to talk to you. So let's let's get on the phone and talk about because that's very exciting uh, to talk yep. about that. Now, expanding on this though, you're looking at a model that Pangaea didn't happen over billions of years, but that the continents were together and that we're actually an accelerated Earth. And I used to hear that 25 years ago and think, oh, mainline science is right. But they keep admitting it's not right, and they keep admitting that. Well, here's an example. I uh, you know, interviewed um, the uh, other member of the Shoemaker, Levy, who discovered the comet first and all the rest of it. They talked about uh, how now they know there's thousands of giant meteor strikes all over the Earth. Previously, they thought they were happening every few million years. Now they know, no, it's happening a lot quicker than that, maybe every thousand, two, three thousand. A lot of ancient cultures write about that and that the tectonic activity isn't gradual like they say, it's explosive. And then if you do put all those things back together and, you, and look at the Sumerian text, the Egyptian text, the Jewish text, it, as you said, it actually is the world together and a different thing and accelerated, which has been proven with now that we have uh, satellites and, and telescopes, we know there are big meteors and, and that would really devastate the planet and devastate human life that are hitting gas giants like Saturn, Jupiter all the time. We know we get hit a lot more often, so at least that model is compressed now where it's not happening every once in a while, just like we saw, what, 1918, you know, over Russia, that giant thing that blew up, destroyed tens of thousands of square miles of stuff. Thank God it was unpopulated. So looking at that model, just in a few minutes, you'll know, come back for a full hour, describe the model you're seeing of a younger Earth system that more and more science is showing. Okay. Um, the Even the Big Bang Theory... Uh, lends credence to the young Earth, uh, the young universe uh, theory or hypothesis at this point. Because in the beginning, when the Big Bang occurred, all the mass of the entire universe that we can detect was crammed down in this very, very tiny little ball. And as it expanded within milliseconds, uh, the light speed and all the electromagnetic uh, waves that came out of it uh, traveled much faster than they do now because space was more dense. And if you calculate it, uh, which uh, Barry Satterfield has done on his uh, website here and some papers he's written, if you calculate it, you'll see that the speed of light at the Big Bang was uh, 10 with 60 zeros behind it faster than now. And that's how we carbon date stuff, how we radiometrically date stuff with whatever gases or, or compounds we use. When you plug this in, this variable speed of light in, it reduces the age of the universe down to like uh, measured in, in tens of thousands of years. And Maybe it's just how thousand. Revelation says God will then crush it all into a scroll. It's like, here's the universe, crush it again, it's a new thing. And then it slows yeah. down, slow, 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 like any explosion. And then doesn't have energy to come back together, but the creator goes, and now you see all these top scientists and the owners of big banks, the occultists now go, look, we've, re we've done the dark matter. Something's holding it together. It's all a simulation. It's all artificial to make us think, oh, then it's all a simulation given to their new simulation. So they're all capitulating right now and admitting that what we've been told isn't true. Yeah, yeah. Look, once you, once you make this uh, change to the timeline, then you can see uh, how the small Earth or the expanding Earth theory works as well, because the Earth was a uh, roughly 25% smaller in diameter before the Great Flood, and I found what caused the Great Flood was a, a at least one, maybe two huge asteroid impacts on the east coast of India and nearby. And then that's why uh, they all describe in every culture that was there that all the water came out of the Earth because there's such giant aquifers and the Earth's being smashed and all the magma's pushing it out. You're going to have floods, waters that come out of the ground. You're going to have rain. Well, they didn't have rain to start with. It used to be dew coming up at night to water everything on the planet. When the asteroid hit and vaporized so much of the sea, it went up into the upper atmosphere, made clouds for the first time, and condensed. Created terraforming. Well, yeah, and it was rain. That was the rain of the 40 days that they spoke of in Noah's account. Um, you know, and the oil companies over there in the area. I was about to say, they Oman. admit now in models of, say, a 20-mile asteroid hitting in the middle of the Pacific, they say it would make there be floods for years, a dark winter, you name it. It would be tsunami-type floods, too, because it would the impact would cause the swishing of all the oceans around the planet. It would just go and sweep animals and trees and everything into swirling death uh, traps, and that's what we find. 
Well, if you look at that, though, and, 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 and you look at the erosion maps, I think clearly we don't know. I, I, the official story we've been told is not accurate. I mean, how could they even know anyways? Clearly, clearly something else happened. They have to have an open mind. They should be really scientists and look at other, you know, uh, hypotheses that come up to say we can explain part of the things you can't. Let's talk together. Let's let's get to the truth. That's what we're trying to do. Absolutely, Stan Deo. Thank you so much, StanDeo.com. We'll talk to you soon. Fascinating. I, I want to get into this trip to Africa. All right, we'll be back with a very special guest that got demonized by a certain little nasty, lying CNN reporter. Now, I know most of them are liars, so that kind of widens the field, but you'll see. Yvette Munoz is our guest, and she goes by your mama's chest hair, yo mama's chest hair. This happened a few months ago, but it's popped back up on the news, and I thought, hey, we ought to get her on. Acosta of CNN mocks Hispanic woman for Trump Pepe doll and Infowars shirt. And that picked up a lot of news then, but I thought, why not get her back on because uh, she it, it's, it's been it's been recirculated out on the web and you know they demonized this Pepe the Frog the uh, the creator of it told people use it I don't care who you are use it but now uh, he sues you uh, if you even um, even basically even talk about it I guess or, or, or just even hold up a frog so I guess he might sue you that's how the left operates now they just think they own total reality uh, but there she is wearing uh, our uh, anti anti fascist shirt because they really are fascist and i thought we would uh, get yo mama's chest hair i guess that's saying mama's got the chest hair where are the men today you've got a very uh, interesting background for, uh, for what you're doing i want to find out what attracted you to the info war and what's happened since this and some of the new breaking news but uh yo mama's chest hair that's what she wants to go by uh, <laughs> tell us about that nickname first uh, well, it originated at, uh, from a movie, Mean Girls, uh, when the goth girl, you know, I keep forgetting her name, but the goth girl, she was wearing a sweater. This guy asked her, hey, nice sweater. Where'd you get, uh, what's it made of? And her response was, from, it's made out of your mama's chest hair. And so that's where your mama's chest hair was born. <laughs> well, that's amazing. Uh, tell, us, tell us about, this is back in the news because you've been converting some of your friends to, uh, for, uh, from being uh, anti-Trump, being pro-Trump, and including some folks that I'm told, uh, you know, are, are, are basically eligible uh, for DACA. So tell us about that. Yeah, that's actually my cousin. Um, him and I are very close. And uh, what happened is once he found out that I voted for Trump, he was very devastated. And he just, you know, he kept repeating to me that I betrayed him. Um, at first, he was... Um, like I said, we were all being indoctrinated by uh, Univision, um, and he thought it was just the end of the world for him. So unable to debate at the time because I actually got red pilled after the elections, and I found out about Infowars after the elections as well. And um, once I was able to tell him what was going on, um, I I got him to sit with me because he was getting a little bit upset. And like I said, he was even threatening me at some point. Um, and I finally got to sit with him and he was willing to listen. Unlike some of my other cousins who just cut communication with me, he sat there and I was debunking every fake news I could. Everything he was concerned about, I was helping him out. Um, and then from there on, we resume our relationship. And I even talk about it in the article that I kept going to his soccer games where people will demonize me for being a Trump supporter and a Mexican. And um, he finally changed 100% his mind because um, after the State of the Union speech, Trump had mentioned that um, he was willing to give a path to citizenship to the DACA recipients if we only built the wall first, which is not a bad deal at all. And once I told him a little bit about that, and he he actually went and see for himself that he, Trump actually did say that in, in the State of the Union, he was like, "What are we waiting for? I want to build the wall. I'll go. I'll go. Let me let me get hired, and I'll build the wall." <laughs> Wow. So um, we, I did have an incident in January uh, when the government shutdown happened. And I was a little bit upset because they were doing all this for illegals when uh, we have other issues of our own. And I kind of got my 
I was very angry at the time, and so my anger took over me, and I, I put a horrible post out there where I was saying that I was going to deport uh, the DACA's parents if the DACA people wouldn't send an email or something to get the government running again. And it backfired. <laughs> but um, my cousin, he stood up there and he was trying to defend me because he knows that I can say anything, you know, because I'm all about freedom of speech. Sure, so, sure, absolutely. Uh, and, and people get mad. People right. say things tongue-in-cheek and, you know, make a point. But when the left does it, it's all cute and, 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 and okay. When we do it, oh, we're all demonized or stuff's taken out of context. But here's the thing. The Democrats mm -hmm. want a giant controlled group that they can keep disenfranchised and so do the Republican establishment. Trump's changing that. And like you said, my listeners are like, wait, Trump's going back when he said that we would give a pass to people that aren't criminals who are, you know, in DACA and by criminal who, 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 who've really been here for a while, who are contributing and, 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 and who haven't committed serious crimes. That's what Trump said during the campaign. He said, listen, the so-called DACA program now just lets everybody in because if we have a serious one that actually vets people, I'm all about making a path to citizenship or coming here easier. We need this. Trump's like, I hire all sorts of people, you know, that come here legally from all over the world to work in my hotels and golf courses. He just said, you just can't have totally open borders. And, and then you got Latin America collapsing. Mexico's built a fence and a wall. And so, yeah, that's mm -hmm. the common sense. And I, that's why I couldn't believe he got attacked by conservatives thinking he'd gone back on what he said when he hadn't. And then a lot of leftists just ignored the fact. But as soon as he said that, the Democrats said, no, we want no borders at all. Well, that's just completely insane. I agree. I agree 100%. And that's the funny thing. See, I used to live in Mexico, and I remember the elections. Um, my very, very first rally was going to Vicente Fox. And we actually thought that this guy was going to change the world, but he was just a typical politician like the rest of them. And the way they do the campaigns in Mexico is um, they always have to give something to the people so they can vote for them. So people are in the middle, and then you got the two politicians, right, two different politicians. And and then the people are like, which is, what are they giving out there? Oh, they're giving buttons. Okay, what are they giving out there? Uh, they're giving hats. Okay, let's go with the guy that gives out the hat. They, they don't even look at the policies. And same thing here. The Democrats are giving so many aid to illegals, and I've witnessed this. And um, that's why they want, they're brainwashed by the Democrats because the Republicans, it's all about you earn for, you earn everything that you have. And Democrats are like, let's feed the ducks. So one day they don't know how to feed themselves. Exactly. And then meanwhile, it's like folks say, don't give people fish, teach them how to fish. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Trump knows we've been artificially shut down. We've been artificially managed to, to make the economy start shutting down. He just says, I'm going to get out of your way. I'm not even giving you your freedom. I'm just going to get out of your way and work to make it more fair for jobs here. And we see it already in a year and a half turning around. And that's why the Democrats are panicking. They're going crazy. Uh, and then I'm just you know, really concerned, though, because like you said, most people know what's going on. And a lot of Hispanic Americans get it. A lot of the people that are immigrants here that came here legally, illegally, they get it. But a certain percentage, mainly it's white liberals that attack me and others, but there's a certain percentage of Hispanic folks that are buying into this lie that really think Trump and, and white people are out to get them. And, and, and that's why I'm, I appreciate your courage because I've talked to other Hispanic listeners and Mexican listeners who have had their fathers and mothers ostracized them, have had whole families turn against them because they said, no, Trump didn't say all Mexicans were criminal. He said a wide open border, the border's got a lot of crime on it. Criminal Americans go to Mexico. We know that doesn't mean all Americans are criminals. And, 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 and so they'll defend and say, no, Trump didn't say that. Show me the clip. And then their own family says, I'll kill you, basically. And I've had listeners tell me this. I've gotten letters. And so it sounds like you've gone through that. And you're saying, do you go to soccer games wearing a Make America Great Again Because you said you, like, go to <laughs> soccer games and they get in your face. What happens? No, I did not take my, any of my uh, MAGA gear. Um, I just go like a regular civilian. I, I go and support my cousin whenever he's playing games. Uh, I try to leave the politics out of everything, but if somebody comes to me and tries to talk to me about politics, then I'll respond to them. Most of the time, they, they hate it because they hate the truth. But guess what? Liars hate the truth. And that's Sure, that's sure. The Who's the pretty girl with you there in, in the American flag outfit? That's my sister. Um, we're very close. She's the one that red-pilled me, and thanks to her, we found out about you. <laughs> uh, 
um, she started red pilling me about the spirit cooking and you know with the algorithms it led us to Infowars because we never knew what Infowars was and then we saw you there just yelling the news and we're like wow this guy he's a little too passionate <laughs> but then uh, you kept giving out sources and that's what really matters uh, we checked out the sources uh, all the articles that you were talking about and that's the funny part is that in the mainstream media on TV they just give you tiny information where they can still uh, get it out of context but the only way to get the real news is by reading and that's why um, I follow you so much because I, I do believe that you have uh, the right sources. Well, you and your sister are awesome. Maybe we should get you as auxiliary reporters to go out and do some work with them. Maybe we should try to hire you. I need to raise some money to do that. <laughs> I didn't plug this hour, InfoWarsStore.com, but when we come back, we'll do five more minutes with you. I want to invite you back for a full hour to take calls soon uh, and invite your sister on as well. Uh, but I want to ask you about Jim Acosta calling you a white supremacist. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that you're not even, you know, I mean, you're a very pretty lady. You're not white. And he's saying calling you a white supremacist. Yo, mama's chest hairs here with us, and I'm going to get her and her sister down here to be in studio with us the next few weeks. Uh, she's, a, she's a firecracker. She didn't want to com complain on air, but they got death threats, you name it, being pro-Trump going back over a year ago. So just recap what that was like, for, and, and, and like talk about your sister's husband that was actually first domino in the family. So we're going to get him down here, too, and celebrate people that are trailblazers that go against the propaganda and then realize the truth, which is a beautiful thing. It's the leftist brainwashing of people. It's not skin color. It's the brainwashing that is the problem, and that's why they think with the demographics they're going to do that. But if we actually take action, we can win. But, but, but just get back to Acosta calling you a white supremacist. Um, yeah, it was pretty funny because uh, <laughs> we were coming out of the Trump rally at the time when that picture was taken, and uh, we were actually sitting right by Trump. So uh, we were so we were so excited that we were in this world that we've been watching through the internet, and to be part of it was super thrilling. So when I saw Jim Acosta with the rest of the reporters uh, in the back. Um, I didn't have any anger. I didn't hate him. I was just thinking, oh, my God, this guy from TV. So I was like, Jim, hey, Jim. And he finally said hello. And um, uh, so I put out my phone, and, uh, and I took up a, a picture, and he was even doing the thumb up. So then he got up, and then he's like, may I take a picture of you? And then my sister, she had the pepper at the time, and she just threw it at me. And I'm like, okay, I'll hold it. And I did my duck lips. <laughs> And uh, then I knew he was going to put it up on Twitter right away. It just gave me that impression. And um, at the time, like I told you, because all this went down about the dreamers and that they were threatening, I had to take down all my social media. But I went back on Twitter. I opened my own Twitter account, just like a response to uh, Jim Acosta. And it kind of backfired because, well, I'm a Mexican descendant. <laughs> oh, look, there's a picture. <laughs> Well, you know, the claim that uh, Pepe is white supremacist because a few white supremacists used it, everybody was using it. It's just, it's like you can take any symbol. Put Santa Claus next to a white supremacist. Now we got to ban Santa Claus? <laughs> right. It was just a meme. So a meme, you just put a little bit of truth in there and it's supposed to be funny. But um, that's how it all started because Hillary was declaring war on this Pepe, saying that it's some dark lord and we worship this thing like cultists. <laughs> I so forgot that. Like, yeah, I can see that we worship <laughs> it. I forgot that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, God, no way. Did she really say that? So we started, I guess you can say, trolling. And we're like, yeah, Pepe, Pepe, we adore this God. But now it means a lot more. Um, to me, uh, Pepe is, is it's very similar to the story of Moses. Uh, remember when Moses was trying to free the people from Egypt and there were the plagues being sent. And the one, one of the plagues was the frogs. So now it, it feels like this is worldwide. Everybody is identifying with, uh, with Kek or, or Pepe, as you want to call it. And... And now it feels like we are helping Trump, who's chosen by God. We're going to help him free the rest of the people. We are that plague, and we're coming hard. <laughs> Ooh, it's like the frogs into Egypt. Wow. I never right. heard that. Is that is, is, did you come up with that? Uh, that's how I see it. 
I, I, I haven't heard it, but that's how I see it because I'm not sure. Uh, even as No, no, that's what I'm saying. You created that allegory. That's powerful. Pepe <laughs> are the frogs invading Egypt. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's super fun <laughs> all right well you're awesome i look forward to meeting you and your sister and her husband here in studio so as soon as you want to come down here um i'm ready <laughs> okay you're awesome yeah next thursday and friday i'm gonna go to a family event i won't be here but any other time get you guys flown down here to texas and we look forward to hanging out with you guys and breaking bread with you you're awesome we love you we appreciate you thanks for standing up you said off air you told me death threats everything but you're, you're still here who cares, man? I'm here to die for this country and for the truth, mainly. And yeah. I know that God is on my side. Hold on, we'll come right back to you. We'll come back to you. Come back to you. The article is up on Infowars.com. Here's why Hillary Clinton is running in 2020. That's the article, but buried in it. I'm going to put our own article out. Buried in the article is the poll. Will Hillary Clinton run for president in 2020? Yes, she'll run. No, she won't run. She'll be dead by then. So Drudge has his poll up there. And I'm going to stay on air now until we have our own article out. No big deal. Just our own article with the poll so I can tell listeners to go to Infowars.com and take the poll. And I'm going to get Paul to retweet it uh, as well. But I, I, I have an intention to get that poll big and actually reach our audience at Infowars.com, it's, it's in an article by Joel Gilbert when he first Friday predicted that Hillary will be running for president in 2020 and the evidence of it. We've talked to insiders. They say she is intending to do it, but I also want to create our own article um, where, where it's there, and then we put the Joel Gilbert story under it. So that's all coming up. Yo Mama's chest hair uh, is, uh, is her handle. She lives up in Chicago, and she's a Hispanic Trump supporter. And so you were telling me off air as I asked about all the harassment you got. People can follow you on Twitter at yo underscore mamas underscore chest underscore hair. People should follow you there. And you got your sister and her husband that got you involved in all this. Just recap for people. When you woke up, the saga, what it's been like. The, the, you said your dad is asleep with a gun because all the death threats. I mean, lay out what it's like for a Hispanic person in America who tries to support America first, prosperity, having basic immigration rules like any other country has, what you have to go through, because we think as basic Trump supporters, we get harassed. But from what I've read and seen, uh, black Trump supporters, Hispanic Trump supporters, I mean, they get attacked. They get called white supremacist. They get fired from their jobs. They get thrown out of stores. Uh, so so, so uh, lay it all out for us. Yeah, it's very scary um, at first. Um, but, I mean, I know that they're all talk and they're just angry. And uh, that's one thing about the Mexicans is that um, they're mainly a little bit too selfish because all they care about is the immigration. They don't care about this other uh, bigger problems that are going on in the country that if we succeed in those problems, then we can help the whole world. But no, they just want to focus on themselves and they don't even know exactly what they want. They just know that they're angry. Um, so th that's why... It, it was pretty scary. I had to take down all my social media because um, you cannot say anything about Trump. And this, this, that's so funny to me because, I mean, he is a president. Since when can we not support the president? And like I said, I was born here. My duty is to protect this country first. My people are the American people. I don't care what color you are. It's the idea that this beautiful country, the culture in this country is that it allows you to have your own culture. So why are we trying to switch and change all of this? We're running away from Mexico because of all the crime and all the corruption. And we want to bring this here. I, I just don't get it. This is the greatest nation in the world. And that's one thing that Mexicans should understand. But, but they've been brainwashed since Mexico. Their politicians brainwashed them. And now they're brain, brain, brainwashed here by pretty words that come from the Democrats and you know what and some rhino Republicans as well so it, I, I hope one day they can realize that this fight it, it's also including them but they need to wait a little bit a little bit before uh, we can fix the whole nation and then we can see uh, the immigration process well you're amazing we really appreciate you and your courage and 
It'd be one thing if Trump got in and the economy didn't turn around and optimism didn't turn around and all these corrupt globalists weren't getting in trouble. But when we know how the globalists have been working to hurt the country and working around the clock to do all this, it just really makes me upset with people that buy into the hype. Uh, but trailblazers like yourself are the real leaders of the future. And you know what Mark Twain said? He said, a patriot is a scarce man or woman in the beginning, hated, scorned, and feared. But in time when the patriot succeeds, uh, the timid join him because then it costs nothing to be a patriot. So we really appreciate you. Yo underscore mamas underscore chest hair. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. All right, take care. Oh, my gosh. Bye -bye. There's Pepe. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> the, the creator of Pepe says it doesn't matter fair use. doesn't matter he said trademark free. doesn't matter he just tried to get his trademark. He says you're not allowed to show that frog. So do you want to bow down to fairy well, right now? Well, this is Keck, and he's been altered. He doesn't look like Pepe. It, it is a frog, but I mean... But I mean, a obviously, he can't claim he owns right? Kermit the frog either. Hell, next <laughs> he'll say these are lily pads, Bob. Bang, bang, bang. Hey, hey, is, is Peppy gay? <laughs> yeah, no, he's not gay. He's atomically correct. I'm not going to show his private parts unless you want to. <laughs> so Keck, Keck's, but Keck's, Keck's but packing? I'm still, right. I'm still protecting him from those evil chemicals. <laughs> <sighs> you're a real sweetheart. Very charming. All right, you're awesome. <laughs> I, I'm, that's a family show. I'm not going to make a really bad joke right now. But, hey, you're awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. You too. Take care, Alex. Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed every second uh, of it. I enjoyed and having you. Like I said, I'm one of your biggest fans. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. I can't wait to meet you and your family. All right, folks. Uh, Lionel is taking over. Former prosecutor, syndicated talk show host, author, whole nine yards. He takes over right now, uh, getting into everything. Please don't forget, we've got 50% off the... Four to five with colloidal silver, iodine, fluoride free toothpaste. We got 50% off brain force, all the rest of it. It's just the mega sales, infowarstore.com, 50% off and free shipping. You cannot beat these deals, whether it's on water filtration, air filtration, everything. It's to celebrate the second American Revolution uh, and the left's attempted civil war starting what's going on. And we've got amazing new t shirts, reelect 45 baseball style, mean as a Wolverine. I want those to be the new big shirts. Check them out, infowarstore.com. No reviews yet because they're still pre order. They're getting printed right now in Texas. They should be shipping out by the end of the week. So get your orders in today. Infowarstore.com, infowarslive.com, or 888 253 3139. Lionel, my friend, tell us what you've got lined up in your raft of repertoire today. Yes, in my, my quiver. As it were. First, we're going to be talking about uh, some rudiments involving the Supreme Court, what you need to know, and about this crazy idea that somehow Roe against Wade is going to be overturned. That will never happen. Also, picking up where you brought up about Hillary Clinton and why, why the ostensible flying coach? What is that all about? How is that? How is that even? It's a happening? super cheap trick, super ridiculous. Well, oh, but it's we're billionaires that use taxpayer money to fly around on private jets and our foundation. Oh, but now we now we fly around with all the all the proles. I want to ask you this question, Alex. Remember, uh, sometime in December, there was a talk about the president issuing an executive order, which basically uh, froze a series of assets of individuals, corporations, and the like that were supposedly or or alleged to be involved in various uh, trafficking activities and the like. Could it be? Could it be under the wildest of imaginations that somehow the Clintons are having to cut corners because for Hillary to appear in public when she's not at all public, Bill loves it. He thrives on that. It's his oxygen. But she is, she, it, she's a, averse. She's a reclusive to, uh, demonic control freak. Now, don't hold back. Don't sugarcoat it, please. What do you think? Don't, 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 don't ride the fence, Alex. Just let me know what she's thinking. And by the way, she never even told us what was she wearing with that backpack. I think it was reptilian exoskeleton. We never found out about that. So anyway, coming up, I want to talk about, to make you smarter about the uh, Supreme Court so you'll be able to talk to and wow your friends. Also about Hillary. And all, another thing, too, is, did you hear that Twitter is, is basically killing 70 million accounts? Do you have a First Amendment right, a freedom of the press right to social media Basically, we'll talk about it you. all straight ahead, but as you know, Indeed. they've argued that, so that should be the case. Stay with us. And now Lionel takes over. I'll be back with a special poll at the start of the next segment, though. This is the Info War, Lionel of LionelMedia.com. We've got him lined up tonight during our extended coverage.
Roger Stone's getting lined up, as well and more of the SCOTUS pick. And I've got to hand it to Lionel. Uh, Lionel's absolutely right whenever he said, look, it's not going to be Napolitano. I don't care what Trump told him because he's, he's too old. And he certainly turned out to be, and he also said other things. But uh, we're going right. to be talking about all that coming up. Uh, go ahead, my friend. No, and it's not because he's too old. It's the same thing with Janine Pirro. He's, he's a state guy who is... doesn't know the federal weirdnesses. Yes, <laughs> I could not have said it better myself. Here's a couple of things here. First and foremost, um, I, I, I fancy, well, I, I get a kick out of folks who all of a sudden suggest that, well, I could just talk about the Supreme Court. I mean, it's about abortion, and the justices get together and they say, "Let's see. Do we like Roe against Wade? Do we do we think it's a good idea? Let's let's vote." It doesn't work that way. Let me give you an idea of something that drives constitutional scholars, some of them nuts. And this may seem a bit dry, but it's not. I want to do two things. I want to show you an actual theory and how it is considered anathema to these particular folks, but also explain why it's so critical. One of the worst cases ever, ever uh, uh, held, if you will, is Roe against Wade. Now, now, just personally speaking, so that you know this, I believe, absolutely believe, that a woman's right to have an abortion should be held, should, should, should be had, that the government should not be able to throw a woman in prison or jail or prohibit it. Now, by the same token, I personally am against abortion. I would want to throw everything in my power at other services to, to, in, to encourage adoption. I'm not for abortion, but I am equally not for a woman being hauled into, let's say, a police station and being told you're under arrest because you had an abortion. It's that simple. I also believe in 100%, 100% abolition of all drug laws. I mean everything involving the mere possession of a substance. Meaning, in my perfect world, if you were holding, um, let's say, uh, crack cocaine or heroin or whatever it is, you would not be able to be thrown into prison just because of that. Now, that doesn't mean I advocate drug use or the like. As a judge, well, let me go one step further. You're going to love this one. I'm against the death penalty, 100% against the death penalty. But as a judge, if I were a judge, federal, Supreme Court, whatever, and you brought to me the case involving a death penalty case from a state where it was held to be legal, and the court has held death penalty to be legal if, if due process considerations are met, I would have absolutely no problem in saying, yep, this was a good case. The defendant's rights were upheld. Due process was maintained. Fine, go ahead and execute him, even though I'm against it. I don't get the chance to say, well, I don't think the Texas legislature was on the money. I don't think the state of Florida was right when they imposed this. So I'm going to just overrule this and and rule it mm, unconstitutional because I don't like it. That doesn't happen. I'm against drug laws, but I could uphold a conviction of a trafficker, somebody charged with trafficking. I could upheld a, the propriety of, a, of a, uh, a search warrant for something that I think is stupid because the issue I'm being presented is not whether I like it, not whether I think morally it's okay, doesn't matter. I'm given a very limited frame of reference. Now, here's what people hated about Roe against Wade. This is what drove them crazy. This thing called substantive due process. Now, bear with me, but I want you to hear the argument, because this is what's argued. This is the argument. Not what you hear on TV, not what you hear on Fox News, uh, to an extent, or MSDNC or any of the others. Due process provides that you cannot be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Life, liberty, property, you can be deprived of that so long as the deprivation is done with due process, meaning notice the opportunity to be, to, to be heard, a trial, a hearing. You got to be told what it is exactly that they're taking. So the government can take away your property, can take away your life 
can take away your liberty. It's in the Constitution. The only thing it talks about is the procedure, also called in some circles procedural due process. So let me repeat. The Constitution says, I can take your life, I can take your liberty, I can take your property. Ever hear of eminent domain? Ever hear of uh, capital punishment? Ever? Of course you have. Ever hear of somebody seizing your property? Yes, so long as due process, the procedure is met. What other people have said was, you know, we think there should be other laws that just should be maintained, some other rights that should be maintained because of just what they are. And one of them is this idea of privacy. They just created this thing. So the government says, the Constitution says, wait a minute, what are you talking about? You can't just make something up. The government says, the Constitution, I should say, says that the only thing we're interested in is how you address, how you handle the fact that life, liberty, and property have been deprived from you. We're not talking about whether life or liberty or property is even in and of itself that special. We're talking about how it's removed from you. That's what Roe did. Roe created this through this crazy whatever it is. Now, that being said, let's cut to the chase. What I just told you right now has been law review article after law review article. The Federalist Society have talked about it. They've been talking about substantive due process forever, and it will bore you to tears. That's the kind of stuff these folks talk about. Administrative law. Oh, my God. You want to story decisis, rest, rest judicata versus such and such. It's not about this popular stuff that we talk about. But listen to me. Roe is never going to be reversed, is never not going to be the law of the land for two reasons. Number one, Justice Roberts said it that there have been people, there are people, who grew up knowing nothing but it. It is so much a part of sure, our... what's going to happen is it's going to get curtailed back to almost nothing by the states. Well, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. But more importantly, by the way, I just heard a voice from the heavens. It sounds exactly like Alex. But the thing that's the most important is that if you think for any... If you think that they're going to remove this particular aspect, this particular vehicle of eugenics, of 50, 60, whatever million babies removed. Well, I was about to say, it's the real racists that want this. I just want anybody to have a shot and a chance. And and expanding on that, is, is, all I know is is that I, I agree with you. They're not getting rid of it. Um, and it's a total political football to say it. But these people need to stop using it as a form of birth control. I mean, if a woman oh, has a... Absolutely. The Supreme Court, unfortunately, does not get to answer that. I think I'll we should just agree to stop partial birth right now. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not do this as I co-host with the great Lionel, former prosecutor, political expert, syndicated talk show host, best-selling author. I do not say this tongue-in-cheek just to garner headlines. That's, that's very easy to do. It was Matt Drudge first started saying in like 2013 when she'd been missing for a year, is Hillary's brain in a jar? And they said, oh, Matt Drudge, conspiracy theorist, blah, blah. And then we started paying attention because I got saddled with the thing that she was sick and uh, saddled with the truth. I mean, I, I got the credit. Drudge didn't get it. I became the guy that said she was sick. No, the Secret Service told us. They said there's a black emergency uh, vehicle, uh, ambulance. She's falling down. A week after we got told, Millie Weaver started falling around. They had an emergency tent. She was in there an hour, stretchers running in. And then a week and a half later on 9-11, she falls like a ton of bricks, which is apropos because she was involved protecting Al-Qaeda and those networks right through into George W. They were both equally guilty any way you slice it. And so when I asked this question, I saw the Drudge Report poll, and it was, is she running 2020, or, or, or should she run for 2020, or should she just retire? I thought, well, ask the question, do you think she's going to run? Not should she run, do you think she's going to run? And then I thought, wait a minute, because I was really thinking, yeah, she's going to run if she still isn't, you know, dead from the brain tumor she had cut out in 2013. There's no doubt, because I was going to, I was phrasing the questions at the start of the show. I, I said on air, I said, I said, will she, will she run? Well, that's guaranteed if she's able, because she wants to control the party. The party's bankrupt, just like last time. She's got billions in her war chest, over a billion at least. 
She wants all the new contributions. She stole it from Bernie Sanders. Of course she will. So then I thought, it's not a question of will she run or won't she? She's running. And our own Joel Gilbert broke that last Friday. When I talked to sources, it's true. But then the big question is, isn't will she won't only if she's dead or completely incapacitated from illness, which I'm obviously not hoping for that. I want her to get better so we can put her in prison. So, the media is so controlled, though, they would show from the time she stumbled, but not when she fell down. Let's go ahead and show it and say, Alex Jones is lying. She only stumbled on the curb, but actually, like a side of beef, the Secret Service said, fell on her face. It's like weekend at Bernie's here. Weekend at Hillary's. So, boom, completely down in the vehicle, clearly having a seizure. Julia Caesar had those. We understand. Uh, the fact is, though, she is an evil person. That's why we don't like her. So... The poll is up on Infowars.com. It's not a troll. It's an honest headline. Will Hillary Clinton be dead by 2020? Info poll asks, is Hillary running in 2020 or will she be dead by then? Hell, will the planet be here by then with all the craziness going on? And, and, and so we don't wish her any harm. Clearly, she's got medical issues. So we just put this poll up. You can retweet it. Will Hillary Clinton run 2020? It's on Real Alex Jones. Will she run? Will she retire? Or will she be de dead by then? I'm going to cast my vote. I believe, I believe she's tough and evil. I believe she will run. I, I believe she'll make it. I think she's got another four or five years in her. Maybe I'm wrong, but I believe she's going to run, and I believe that she's going to make it. I was about to vote for her dying, but I just, I don't know. I believe Hillary's going to live. So click on it. Let's Alex Jones's vote live on air, please. There you go. Boom. Let's vote. And it doesn't have millions of votes like Drudge. Nothing's as big as Drudge. But I want everybody to go to Infowars.com with the 6,000 votes that are there. Well, we get 100,000 votes, 200,000 all the time. I want to get, when we do polls, we should do them every day. I want to get your take on this. But let's vote for Lionel right now. Uh, Lionel.com. He'll be hosting with us tonight during live coverage. It goes 3 o'clock right through past 9 o'clock tonight with the Supreme Court announcement. Uh, follow him uh, on Twitter, obviously, there, right there on screen. He's really popular on YouTube. His average video has 100,000 views despite censorship. That's really phenomenal. Hundreds of millions of views. Lionel, didn't mean to hijack the hour, but you invited me to. Uh, so it's all your fault now. You let me in. Uh, <laughs> wading into this swamp, what is your vote? Uh, going to run, going to retire, or going to be dead? Going to run. Going to run. Absolutely going to run. And it goes to show you the complete absolute meltdown of the Democratic Party. I mean, I cannot believe this, how they would even do this. You know, Alex, here in New York, we have this Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, this young lady who is a kind of a, a latter-day version of Bernie Sanders. She is a Democratic Socialist. She, again, invigorated the youth vote. To the Bernie younger Sanders, people, the just, just better looking. Well, she is, she is, she also, Bernie Sanders, she's Bernie Sanders, I hope, with a pair who wasn't made a gelding and didn't receive an inadvertent orchiectomy because this man let all these people down. But here's what's going on right now. The Democratic Party is shifting because of her, and she's being called by Perez and others, the voice it's of the Democratic Party. It's racing towards extreme leftism. Yes. And what happens is now, one of two things, maybe because with, with Hillary, you got to think, now, wait a minute. Don't ever think anything's just inadvertent. Could this be this crazy, careening, out-of-control, left-wing faction of the Democratic Party to which people will say, Hillary, we need you to pivot and carry Exactly back. like she did with exactly, like they're letting it go that direction, so she's the savior. So she could be the stalking horse, or she could be the sheepdog, whatever it is. She could be the rodeo clown, whatever you want to call this. But what I don't understand is how anyone... How, the, how President Trump, or anybody for that matter, can allow this woman to remain, to remain, um, uh, by, the way, <laughs> by the way, Godwin has taken over you. The Godwin principle has taken over, apparently, the Alex Jones show, as we, of course, are going more Hitlerian in your particular cartoon annotations. That notwithstanding, what I'm wondering is, how in the world has she escaped not only that, oh, I'm going to see this. This is great. The mind of a killer. Okay. How has she escaped, Alex? Any kind of prosecution for anything. The Clinton Health Access Initiative, the Clinton Global Initiative, the Clinton Foundation, all of those countries, all of those people, all of those individuals, she, I don't think, has ever been audited. How does that work? Plus, 
everything. We can go through the litany. You don't need to have me say this. But how does this even happen where she hasn't even gotten a parking ticket, not even a misdemeanor? How can anybody in their right mind look at this and say you're doing a great job? Although you've got a real talent. Is that is that some kind of an MS-13 teardrop yes. there? Is that what that is? Okay, yes. very good. I was and wondering. And what's that in Bill Clinton's lap? Uh, uh, I don't even want to I think. I don't even want it's to go It's a one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater. That's right. Or, um, now let me ask you, did you see the particular book he was perusing on the flight? I don't know if that means. Oh, that they always have some message. What was it? Well, this was apparently. Little Orphan a, Annie, maybe a Jerry Epstein's Lolita Express. What was it? No, no. I like 12-year-olds right or what was it? Well, uh, it, 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 not, not per se. It was very interesting. I, I, I have it here. And by the by, let me just also throw something out there, just because, you know, it, it never ceases to amaze me. The, uh, hang on a second. Oh, this is uh, Crimson Lake by Candace Fox. This is where the accused, but not convicted of a brutal abduction. Ted is now a free man and a public enemy member one. Oh my God, so he's got a prisoner video, a, a book, or a, a fugitive thing, like we're the, we're the people accused of stuff, but we haven't done it. Ha! <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, Everything with also, them is always a message. It's, of a, it's also a reference, of course, to some abduction or whatever. And do we also hear about this incredible turn of events in our neighboring uh, New Jersey, Alex, of a woman who apparently was going to be testify this coming week before a grand jury regarding some improprieties on the part of her, whose house blew up and her husband as well. Uh, you, 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 you can't miss this. Uh, Let Carol me ask Pallet you that question selfishly when we come back, as you are a former criminal prosecutor and a really smart fish. A lot of people ask why I'm still alive. They thought of Hillary one, she just persecuted me, and she is persecuted me. Three of her affiliated law firms are suing me, but a lot of smart money ask why I'm not dead. They think it's because there's a surveillance state, and they know Trump's watching, and that's too much for her to do, but they do kill so many people, blow up so many houses. I mean, they're thugs. Why has she not killed me yet? I mean, that's a real question, and I, and I think some people think she wants to slowly destroy me first, like a spider kind of ties up its victim first, lets them hang there a while before they do it. But long before that, Hillary will be bye-bye. <laughs> Lionel, I want you to get to some of the other areas you wanted to break down here before we end this hour and the war room starts. It's going to be extended coverage right through Trump's announcement, 8 o'clock Central, 9 o'clock Eastern on the Supreme Court nominee. But well, just separately, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no. It's, uh, first, first of all, it's lionelmedia.com. That, but that's okay. But, uh, you know. Lionel.com? I've been saying Lionel. I wonder what that is. Maybe the train cup? I don't know. I'm just guessing. Lionelmedia.com. I know that. I go to the site that's all the time. Correct. And how do people that's follow you correct. on Twitter? But, you know, Alex, the thing that I wanted to talk about, which I think is even more fascinating, is this idea, and I know that we've talked about it, is that when you have an organization like Twitter or Facebook who decides to wipe out, let's say, 70 million accounts because they are fake, for whatever its reason, you know, whatever the but whatever cri criteria they use, they say these are indeed fake. These are fake, and that's what they okay, fine. The question then becomes: Do we have any duty, or do they have any duty, to provide news to us? If you say, wait a minute, you're you're basically destroying my my account, and you're also keeping news from me. Do I have a First Amendment right or a cause of action against you? And what Twitter and, and the Facebook answer is yes, because they and, and 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 Facebook and Google, which have said we are a public commons, we are a utility, leave us alone, let us grow, let us be ubiquitous. But then they jump back and say we're a private corporation. You can't. And then they selectively interpret rules and let the leftists engage in all these discriminatory practices. But then anybody that's nationalist, conservative, even anti-war, classical liberals, they're all banned. But then when also they're, they're using bots that look for a particular type of Russian ideology or Russian... A Russian um, no, 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 no. Uh, it's beyond that. If you've got well, a Facebook I page with a couple million likes and some account connected somehow to Russia comments, you're now a Russian agent. Even though the Democrats, as you know, did 80% of the spending in Russia to get around campaign finance laws. England's the big place. Canada does it. Everyone runs over to these foreign uh, PR companies. Anybody can hire them. And then and Democrats were spending 80% of the money in, in Russia. They spent it wasn't much. It was, it was like a couple hundred million views or something. It was nothing. And then Trump had something like 8 million views or something. It was nothing. It was nothing. It was nothing. 
But yeah, here's an example. CNN goes and harasses a lady saying her local pro-Trump group isn't real because a Russian account that they say is a bot account commented on her. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm ranting. Oh, no, no, you're not ranting. But but here, but here, what they'll do is, or if you happen to use a particular type of, of Russian phraseology and through its bot mechanism and algorithm, they say that's enough. Look, the bottom line is simply No, this. that's right. The, the, the so-called Russians were, were, were buying search point terms in ad, like Twitter came to RT, which is Russian state-run, and said, we want you to spend, you know, $50 million or whatever it was in the election to push your traffic right. and make money. They said, no, we'll do a test deal. I think it was for like a half million. And they didn't even like the response. They then used Twitter targeting RT articles that I think are too liberal, by the way, as the proof of Russian collusion right. in a media right. buy. That's how it works. But Russia, but, but Twitter went to RT. Asking, begging, yes. seizing, and treating, importuning them to buy this, and then later on said, "Aha! But you're a Russian safer." And by the way, I still want to hear whether BBC, Rayuno, CCTV, uh, Al Jazeera, others as well. You never hear about that. But here's the bottom line: is simply this, Alex. Let's assume that I happen to own the rights or the patents to a particular type of ink that is in 95% of all newspapers during an era where we use newspapers. And I'm a private company, and I, but I happen to make this ink. I'm the only and one And I decide who not to sell you ink. That's the ultimate argument of how they're violating the First Amendment exactly. with their monopoly. Exactly. What I'm doing is I just basically wiped out 95%, or better yet, I'd say I'm selling it to everybody except you. Now, this is the, this is the bottom Wait, line. Wait, I this, interrupted you. I want to make this like a one-minute YouTube, Twitter viral video. Start over. I interrupted. Everybody needs, we're going to use this. This, your, this is the best allegory, best analogy. Take your time without me on the screen. Lionel okay. of LionelMedia.com, not Lionel.com, LionelMedia.com. Great brain, start over. Okay. Assume that during the era of newspapers, I'm a company that happens to make an ink, the only ink that is used in 95% of all newspapers. And then for some reason or another, I decide, as a private company, that I'm not going to sell this ink to you and to you and to you and maybe 50% of all the newspapers in the country that I disagree with politically. They turn around and say, in effect, I have denied them their ability to express themselves. I turn around and say, no, I'm a private company, a private concern. I am not susceptible to the protections of the First Amendment because I'm just a private person who can elect for a variety of reasons, not to sell to you. But by virtue of my positioning, I've just eliminated swaths of, of, of information, of expression, individually, not to mention if there's any kind of a corporate or I should say federal collusion. And now we've got the person. Sherman Antitrust Act since 1906 and everything clearly Google uh, saying that all Republican candidates are Nazis when you search their name as the first search result in the official Google thing. This isn't just monopoly practices. They're using the monopoly to then engage in weaponized propaganda and lies. So as a smart guy and a media analyst and a former prosecutor, what does Trump, what do we need to do to stop this, 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 you know, this clear monopoly being used to try to overtake our republic? What we do and what we hope for is a new and enlightened Supreme Court or a new American jurisprudence and juridicature to look at this and realize that today the rules are going to have to change. What was a quaint little social media platform, what was interesting before in Facebook and all of that now happens to be the sole means by which people get the news. And not only that, Alex, when I turn around and I say that you are fake news, I've just disparaged you. This is corporate libel. I've just said that what you are saying cannot be trusted. So not only have I limited your particular range, I've said that you are fake. That's that the key. They take fake. our speech, then they misrepresent us and strangle us in the dark. Exactly. And all of these rules in the past about what private ownership is and whether it's there's state entanglement or federal involvement, that has to change right now in this. And that, by the way, goes to show you that these nice and quaint little statements about how the Constitution is not a living and breathing or instrument, it is. Because 
Right now, if I sat down, going back to the days of Madison and Jefferson, and I tried to explain social media... They would think you were a Martian from Pluto with 14 heads. And, 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 but, but you're the lawyer, but explain this to me. Because I'm a strict constructionist from what I've read and studied. But you have to take the original intent and follow then the rulings and the changes and try to express the original intent of human empowerment and liberty, but in the modern context. Right. And what they will do is they will say to you, Alex, being a strict constructionist and originalist, they will say Congress shall pass no law using the state via the 14th Amendment through the incorporation by reference uh, doctrine. They will say Congress and the government, they are the people who can uh, basically infringe upon you and impinge upon your rights. No, but, but you're right. So research. they would use a strict constructionist rule. People were ignorant to actually allow everything after that to not have a constitutional authority. But how do you use them not being strict constructionist then to say it's living, breathing, take the guns well clearly the people shall not be infringed but then in a modern sense you've got to then express that into the modern template okay but here's the switch though when you go back and look at the legislative history of this and you say where did these come from where did google and facebook through darpa through gov government feeder system i would respectfully submit that the government is indeed the silent partner of these so you have this connection what the you First just Amendment said is incredible i know for a fact that it was Trump, we broke this days before uh, Bloomberg did, that went in and said all these thousands of conservative accounts, unban them. They totally banned us, then they went to shadow ban. But InQtel, the CIA, the NSA did create Google 20 years ago. And so what you said is absolutely uh, profound because that is indeed the case. So, so that makes it beyond a monopoly. It's the state operating a monopoly, hiding behind the fact that it's corporate towards a larger goal. You would submit that Facebook and Google and Twitter are the government. The government's a silent partner. It's like when the mob ran the Teamsters. It's when the mob ran Vegas. Well, we, we, we pierce that veil, that corporate veil, that fiction. So what happens is we need people to understand that right now these, these incredible organizations, Facebook and others, this is not some quaint little picture of somebody in their little pet dog. This was DARPA created I mean, Internet to take over the world. And the government is the silent partner, that this is subterfuge, this is pretext, that this is exactly what's going on. Therefore, by virtue of the... Therefore, it's deep state rebelling against President Trump and the American people. And it isn't just government, it's rogue groups with corporations getting filthy rich, robbing taxpayer money and public utilities, and it needs to be taken away from their mutinous asses. And the First Amendment applies, and it's a violation of our First Amendment rights plain and simple. that was a grand slam segment line will be back tonight during the coverage of the scotus pick infowars.com forward slash show amazing war rooms up next you know someone very profoundly once said many years ago that if fascism ever comes to america it'll come in the name of, li of liberalism you're a, a white male you're a white man if you are receiving this transmission you are the resistance InfoWars comes to mind. Alex Jones. Alex Jones. Alex Jones. Well, there's a lot of controversy around this network about Alex Jones. Google is being accused of hiding negative stories about Hillary and her campaign by changing its algorithm to bury stories like the Clinton body count story. That's according to website InfoWars. This conflict has confirmed there are at least two shooters with a fully automatic weapon. Dr. Martin Luther King has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. JFK was shot from the back and the front. It was almost as if there were a planned implosion. It just pancaked. They took the babies out of the incubators and left the children to die on the cold I think this is a national security imperative. We have clear things that we do not understand how they work operating in areas that we can't control. UFOs. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world? The central bank is in charge. Israel claims the attack was accidental, but some former U.S. naval officers say it was on purpose. They describe the day's action as part of a continuing cover-up. Russian intelligence compiled a dossier on Mr. Trump during visits to Moscow. Russian scum! Denied everything. He called it all fake news. And he accused CNN of being fake news. This is a national emergency. If they kill Trump or remove Trump, it will cause a massive civil war in this country. This was a theme of high level. We are at war with Russia. 
Are you aware that Mr. Stone also stated publicly that he was in direct communication with Julian Assange and WikiLeaks? The White House and the president are citing InfoWars. They can shut us down. You're next. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. It's Alex Jones. Extendowise, the latest product from InfoWarsLife.com, fuses all the known compounds that have been proven to be good for our hearts and cardiovascular system. And listen, everybody's got a heart. Well, actually, maybe Hillary and George Soros don't, but everybody else has a heart, and this product is amazing. So, if you have a heart and you want the very best product out there that's designed to aid a healthy heart and cardiovascular system, it's Extendowise, available at InfoWarsLife.com. And like all of our products are game changers, this baby is the most souped up, awesome version the top formulators can come up with and still be affordable. It's one of the very best heart pills out there. It's Extendowise. So get some for yourself and family and friends. It's got the very best fish oil from the fjords. It's very, very pure, very, very clean and has the EPA type that is specifically good for the heart, cardiovascular system. Uh, it's got the properly formulated type of CoQ10 and more. It is Extendowise, now available at InfoWarsLife.com.